You call that radio. You call that radio TV. Hello. You call that radio TV. This is, you call that radio. This is, you call that radio TV. And tonight, it's a Christmas miracle with Kona Mustard and the Dijon 5. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There we go. And look at this. It's a, it's a bloody Christmas miracle. I just, I just woke up. I had a, I had a power nap in the afternoon. Came in and I woke up. I was wearing a Santa hat. And look at this. Look at this. Is that not good? I think that's, I think that's really, really good. I think that the elves did a great job. And it's uh, starting to feel a lot like Christmas here. Tomorrow night, Max Thompson telling you the story of how a Motherwell boy ends up in Toronto as a, a rapper and beat maker. From Motherwell to Toronto, I believe. Definitely from Scotland to Canada. And that is going to be an interesting story. Make some really good tunes. And just want to hear what it's, what it's like. What is it like? Oh, that's no... No, this one first. The awards ceremony, Christmas Eve. Do you know what? I'm going to put a wee link in the comments because we, we probably need a few more replies to this. So we've been doing the viewers what we're going to do the viewers awards. I mean, some of the awards I'm just going to dish it myself. But you can vote, vote for your end of year list because if end of year lists are important, they're really important. As you can see, everybody's got everybody has an end of year list of who their favourites are. So we're doing it. Why not? We did it last year and no one gave a shit. Maybe this year you'll give a shit because we're on the telly instead of the, the radio. So, end of year awards. I put that um, a link in the comment. Oh, it's maybe too big. I'll do it again in a little minute. But yeah, do, be, do get involved for that. The Christmas Eve awards ceremony. I think we're going to start at five o'clock on Christmas Eve just so that we can do some day drinking, really. And then, then we got then Christmas Day. There may or may not be a, a Christmas message from Frank Food Day. I do know that Frank Food Day wants to go head to head against the Queen in a battle for ratings, but we don't know if he's available. He's kind of went down the rabbit hole a wee bit with the with the whole twenty twenty thing. So we'll find out if he's available or not. Boxing Day. It's overheard in the West End. It's a Boxing Day special. We uh, we will have a we'll have a, some special guest host. We've got the amazing Dick Jackson and the Circus Fantasticus doing a headline set live in real time from and Roberta Pia, absolute legend, who was our second ever guest. And you call that radio and our first headliner of the year on Overheard. She's back. We've got Becky Wallace is back. Mima Moreau is back. Peter A. Back, apocalyptic theorists. Back, not back. They're they're new. Their first gig of the year, but I understand they've been working really hard on it. So that's going to be John Boyle live from Barcelona, I believe as well. So lots of and there's more. There's more than that. Just try to keep up with the flyers. There's so much stuff going on this week. And then well, hug me. Will there be hug me? What do you think for hug me? Will we do a hug me? People are saying, what about Hogmanay? People are saying, what, what about, what we going to do? What we going to do? What about Hogmanay? And we're saying, what about it? What about it, eh? We'll maybe do something for Hogmanay as well. And then, then there will definitely be a wee, a couple of, a few days off, I think, to recharge the batteries. But tonight's a, a special episode. It's, it feels right to get the Christmas lights out because we've got the amazing Colonel Mustard and the Dijon 5. Uh, just a quick shout out if you are watching us on YouTube. Well, you've got to be because I don't think we're on anywhere else tonight. So we're on just on YouTube just now. We might go on Facebook briefly later on, but we're going to 
stay on 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 Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, remember to hit that subscribe button. <laughs> And the final thing is just a thank you to everybody who's been helping us build the thing this year. Um, that includes the new Patreons, Ian, Rory, Kath, Louise, Mo, Tam, Andrew, Martin, Colin, Susan, and the most three most recent ones who, who have taken us up to 193 Patreons. This is incredible. The goal... It's 200 patrons. That would be a, a Christmas miracle. Catherine, Dave, Claire, Legends. Claire just did it for the year. So if you don't want to pay a monthly subscription, then you can just pay a one-off annual subscription. And that'll get you full access to the new website, all the bonus content, and you will be entered in every, every single regular raffle that we do. And I think we're going to have a wee raffle tonight. So if you want to be involved in the raffle, then go to patreon.com forward slash you call that radio. And that's it, because there is no more adverts. There is no funding. That's it. It's all. It's just going to be myself chatting with Colonel Mustard in the Dijon Five. So let's do it. Let's do it. Everyone hit the share button. This is the rules. If you want to have see a cut, a Colonel Mustard, a Colonel Mustard Christmas miracle, hit the wow react right now. And if you want to, if you want to have some Dijon in your turkey, then you hit the laugh reaction. Like laugh react as if some, something really funny's happening. Ha <laughs> ha! I want Dijon in my turkey. <laughs> Yes, it's time for Colonel Muscle Dijon 5, inflatable, ginger, inflatable, ginger. Inflatable ginger party, won't it? It's in the house. <laughs> Vanilla <laughs> Johnson. Oh, yes. Greg's here. Oh, Looking yes. good. Oh, yeah. John McMustard, the Colonel, is in the house as well. Yes. Merry Christmas. I wish I had a bell. You know, we're going to need to tell those elves to get a bell. I'm still oh. underdressed. I know you're not Santa enough, John. Well, I'll even get Santa with me. That's great. Actually, oh, shoot. Bill, how's Santa doing? He's swinging back Santa, and forth. I think he's been on the sharing already. Santa going to be able to work through these COVID restrictions? Ah, he's only a one-man team. The reindeer don't count. They're under eleven. So, all right, yeah, of course, of course. So, yeah, he's all right. <laughs> and I think I take all the the pre, all the gifts that are being made by the is it the elves? Do the elves do that? The dwarf, the elves, the elves. The so elves. the the elves make the things, and then the presents stay out for maybe seven to fourteen days, so it's safe for Santa to to handle them with care. I think I think it was a mad rush to give them that seven days. So yeah, maybe just maybe just push it forward. Yeah, it's like three days will be fine, Santa. And Santa's like, I'm actually in a in a kind of vulnerable, protected category. And they're like, you'll be fine, Santa. You're always fine. And he's just probably something like that's happening. What is happening with Colonel Mustard? He's on five because this is normally this is Colonel Mustard season, isn't it? Well, I mean, you've got festival season as well, but I think. Christmas is the season for Colin Mustard, John. Ah, yeah, it's, it's one of our kind of best times of year. Everybody loves a good Christmas night out, and we usually like to provide one. But ah, it's obviously disappointing this year not to be playing a big Christmas gig, but it's quite nice to have a wee break as well. So, and next year will be even more special. Yeah, man, absolutely. It's been. Christmas, Christmas, the Christmas uh, Daft Mad Friday weekend was the first gig I ever played, and I've managed to keep that up every single year of of playing a gig. And obviously this year it wasn't really possible. But we still did capture works on Saturday. 
And Aye. Because there was a couple of there was a couple of spaces opportunities. Like I did end up doing a, a gyro song with Doogie from Killer Whale, Mickey Nines, and I also so one of the, the MCs didn't turn up on Saturday, so I threw myself in to do a Jackal Trades set, and also made me appreciate now why so many bands are scared to you know do things without practicing. Yeah, you know, I was a wee bit like, oh come on, what's the worst that can happen? But then actually having it going on live TV without a practice kind of made me go, oh right. Yeah, I should have did that. I should have, I should have practiced or shut the, f- shut up. No, do you know what I mean? He's a- Who's oh, that? Yeah, Who's got? Who's my mum there? She was asking me if I wanted my dinner, but it was a bit too late. Oh, <laughs> well, that was it. It was nice. It seemed to what you were addressing on a nice way, a very Christmassy. No, thank you. But have a nice Christmas anyway. That kind of thing. <laughs> He's always getting in my room, you know what I mean? <laughs> Jigsaw Tiger's in the house. Jingle all the way. Merry Christmas, Jigsaw Tiger. Merry Alan Christmas. says, How are you doing? Do you like I know, I better, I better get a hat or something on it. Yeah, man. Oh, we're going to play. We'll just, we'll just, we'll just do a wee intro to comments, and then we're going to play one of the Christmas songs. Just so that'll give you a few minutes to uh, to get ready for that. Wow, Merry Christmas. Thanks for the t shirt, says Petra. Merry Christmas, Pleasure. Petra. Merry Christmas, Petra. <laughs> That will be the elves. That was the elves. Food uh, evening trips. Raymond Dito's in the house. Thank you, elves. Raymondo. Colette says hi all. Love baby doll. Hello, hi, sugar man. cube. All right, baby uh, doll. Seasons greetings. Yes, Hogmanay. Yeah, well, maybe Hogmanay. There is. There's maybe a Hogmanay thing going on. I mean, I suppose if there's really, there's literally nothing else that I can do. Really, is there so? Might as well like, get a bit of crack here. And uh, not far away from 200. No, we're, we're not far away from 200, but it would be it would be a Christmas miracle if we could reach that number. For anyone just joining the show, 200 patrons is what I need to exist as a human being. We did the maths, and that's what it costs for me to exist. It's 200 patrons. We're at 193, so I'm almost a real human. Let's go and play a song. Christmas Pimpin'. Vanilla Johnson, how did Christmas Pimpin' begin? Uh, it starts with jingly bells, and then the drums come in, <laughs> and then the song starts. <laughs> Ed, Colin, would you agree with this? That's the, the fair assessment, yeah. There's, there's a bit in the middle of it, but pretty much jingle bells. Drums. But there's also a bit of magic in there, John, as well, isn't there? A bit of Christmas magic sprinkled in there somewhere. The Christmas spirit is strong. Dad. I think there is a bit of a Dad. Christmas spirit there. The and we're going to... Oh, says we've got a Christmas spirit. <laughs> Three days till Christmas, son. Yesterday, you don't else. Does it not behave? You think he behaved himself? You know, a couple of days before I Christmas. Like, this could, yes, Santa's, Santa's watching. This is Christmas pimping for those who don't know. A classic from Colin Mustard and the Dijon Five. Get you the spirit, John. Get a hat on. Right. Santa, can I get a suit suit? Can I get a coat made from Panda? Can I have a man bag? If you skin, I'll ask my granddad, can I have a gift map? Can I get a computer made from Cold Town, paint a gold on the wall? With African rocks in my play box, people have died for. But Christmas is gonna pimp your ass, Christmas is gonna pimp your ass. Sailing snow to the Siberian. Have a Merry Christmas, cause we're Christmas pimping. Everybody's gimping. The bells are ringing as we all get minging. Santa's coming and we'll all get humming. Mom got a loan from a bummer if he had been our ruling out summing. Ho, ho! Meanwhile, back in the Shire, the second last minute shopping gets dire. Christmas lights flashing, heart a mother well on two let signs and the moon and hotel shuffling around in the dust. Where Jim McNulty and I used to bust Street host, closing hour Shopping in the shadow of Glen Cairn Tower Christmas booze disciples Raise your glasses far and wide Take these tins of misery And use them to destroy all your pride That 
as a mockery, but this is reality. Cause that is a mockery, but this is reality. Cards with Christmas tempting, everybody's camping. The bells are ringing, as we all get ringing. La 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 la. Santa's coming, and you will all get coming. Mom got a loan from a father, if he had been a ruling ass of him. Ho, ho! 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 Jingle bells, jingle sails, it's a gyro day. The police has come locked up, my mum, for trying to run away. She's bad for my star, she has a nice bow, banned from every bridge and cash. Oh, oh, oh. I remember people used to go to chapel, now they queue outside the church of Apple, worship bingo callers and enter every raffle. By humbug, I admit I'm a hypocrite, so stick me on your Christmas list. Stick on a pop song and let's get single fish. We do with it, single fish. Christmas is gonna pimp your ass. Christmas is gonna pimp your ass. Sail and snow to the Siberians. Have a merry Christmas, cause we're Christmas pimping. Everybody's camping. The bells are ringing as we all get ringing. Santa's coming and we'll all get coming. Mom got a loan from a bummer if we hop in our ruling house of him. Richard isn't homo, he's not by a head to roll, he's only crimbo sexual, he's the special kind of guy that lives his whole life playing tennis in the snow globe, doing Christmas number ones, right in my earlobes, he's doing Christmas number ones, right in your earlobes. But Richard is gonna pimp your ass. But Richard is gonna pimp your ass. Sailing snow to the Siberians. Have a merry Christmas, cause we're Christmas pimping. Everybody's pimping. The bells are ringing as we all get ringing. Santa's coming and we'll all get humming. Mom got a loan from a bummer if we are when I rule it out storming. Ho, ho! Can I get a ho? Ho! Can I get a ho? Can I get a ho? Can I get a ho? Can I get a Brothers and sisters, may the peace that can only come from the one God be upon you. We are here to tell the people that we hear you. One God will not allow us as people of conscience to lose our morale. by our patrons. Indeed, all that way. Do you know what I thought I'd want to do? I thought I'd want to go live to Facebook. So, Facebook, hello, Facebook. We're back here just briefly to tell you about what you're missing. We are live with the uh, total month of the Beach on Five. It's the Christmas special. And if you... But you can watch a bit of it here just now, but you can't do that for long because we're going to cut you off and you need to go to youtube.com forward slash you call that radio. But I just thought I'd go there just to kind of sort of rub it in and show you what you're missing. Get off Facebook, get on YouTube. There's a bit of an echo coming through. Is someone uh, taking uh, their headphones out? Hi, John. John, you're going to have to mute, John. No, 
Great reindeer antlers. At least he's making an effort. At least he's making. At least he's trying to make an effort. Slight yeah, effort. Yeah. Do you know? I mean, I have not seen many people. I've been kind of trapped in this cave for about you know a year now. But I see lots of Colin. I see lots of John. It's quite. It's quite nice to actually see Vanilla Johnson, though. You know, it's like good to see someone that you don't see very often. So thank you for being I here. I think it's, it's good to see. You. I'm not seeing you in ages either, Greg. I've been hiding in this this room. This is my den. I spend every you, day. You, you, are you still are you still keeping true to your lockdown locks? Oh yeah. Oh, it's, that's beautiful. Wow, it's a, it's a majestic, oh, it's a majestic lights main affair. Brilliant stuff. I gave up. I gave up. But hold on, I think John's back. Hello, you hear me? Yes, that's better. Yeah, you I don't know what's going on. Right, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes reindeer antlers can cause a bit of feedback. I think it's uh, the electromagnetic energy that we were talking about la on last night's show. So we just watch Christmas gimping. Everybody's gimping. Do you do you foresee a time in the future where maybe you get cancelled <laughs> and they say Shane McGowan has to deal with the, the coke scandal every year? I I think like, even some of the the lyrics on the first album are probably seem a bit controversial now. Uh, whereas at the time, it's obviously, you know, well, we, even some of the the uh, lyrics in that, Cliff Richard isn't homo. He's not bi or hetero. He's only crimbo sexual. I don't well, think that could get, that could get cancelled now, can it? Aye, that could get you cancelled <laughs> easily, but. It's, it's funny, isn't it? And true. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, also, just to clarify that Cliff, that, uh, Cliff was uh, found innocent. There was no, um, you know, it was all... Just ah, exactly. All we're not, we're not, not choosing not Cliff Richard that. then, and other than he's, he's criminal he sex. He loves, a, he loves a Christmas jumper, basically. He loves a Christmas jumper. You know, he's not, oh, he's not listening jumper. to Boris. He's, Cliff Richard's not cancelled Christmas, is he? He's just getting on nah. with things, doing what Cliff Richard does, whatever that may be. We've got um, Stuart Gentleman in the house. Hello, Stuart. Hi, Stuart. All right, uh, Stuart. How you doing? Hi, Stuart. You were, in a, you were in a podcast with Stuart just recently. Is that correct? True or false? I was. Aye. Aye, it was good. Good laugh. We've got Susie Briggs. Says, hi, hi everyone. Shouts to Susie. Hi, Susie. Hi, Susie. We've got Alan. Alan's in the Christmas spirit with the Christmas tree, and that's a man that I don't think particularly cares for Christmas too much. So it sounds it sounds like You're that's what Alan. Oh, you yo yo yo! What tree. we got here? We got some Christmas this year tonight. Vanilla mustard and ginger surprise. It says Andrew Westcott. That is very much oh, the case. Right. I keep it my new mustard name, ginger surprise. Serves surprise. to you by oh, dealer. To you and a cracker. <laughs> and a cracker. What? No. See, because like Colin's calling himself the inflatable ginger party Voltex, um, John, that's not his real name, is it? And he knows it. No, it is. That's his real name. I thought it was infallible or something. No, he, he, predictive text. Aye. See, to be fair, Colin always said inflatable. I had him as infallible initially. But yeah. It just I never really took off, though. I mean, when I seen it written down, it's kind of like a tough word for the likes of my brain to understand, I was, you know, it's maybe something for George Gall. It's a George Galloway word, really, isn't it? <laughs> Russell Brand. Russell Brand. It's, pull it it's for a Russell, aye. <laughs> Russell Brand, George Galloway audience, but yeah, inflatable is more our kind of level, I would say. <laughs> we've got, uh, we're, we're, we are live just now on, um, we've got, we've got a Facebook user. Thank you very much, Facebook user, for tuning in. Live from Yorkshire. Gary Penders is Hi. tuned in as well. Hi guys. Hello Yorkshire. We've got Rab Wright in the house. All right, We've Rab. Mistletoe and wine is a crime against music. Can we just clarify that Cliff Richard was found of no crime? Um, and Andy says, have yourself a very Merry Christmas. And um, yeah, I think I think I can feel that there's a Christmas vibe here. The first time ever. Is this the strangest Christmas that's ever happened? No, I think that I, th I think the one well Oliver Cromwell cancelled Christmas, didn't he? So that would have pro probably have been worse because you you get murdered for celebrating it. 
Can we talk a bit that then? What was that like? <laughs> <laughs> ah, it was just, well, obviously it was a difficult time, you know. Cromwell was, we all thought, oh, brilliant, let's get rid of these royals once and for all. But as history, uh, as always happens in history, someone worse took over. So if you take out the Queen's Christmas message, because I know what Frank Foody, for example, he wants to, there's been rumours he wants to go at a battle and a head to head with the Queen and for a Christmas message on, on Christmas Day. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Frank Foody's Christmas message. I think it's a message. I'm not starting to right. until I hear it. Do you think that that could, uh, I mean, he, he, I think he's hopeful that if he, a good performance in the ratings against the Queen could take the monarchy down, but do you think that there's a danger that that might sort of might lead to set, everything that, set everything a bit too well and Christmas would be cancelled forever? It depends what Frank Foody's vibe is, but do you know, it, it could go down that road, the roundhead road. I think his vibe, his vibe is very much anti anti Bill Gates, very much anti all that stuff. He's uh, been educating himself a lot on YouTube this this weather, and I think that he wa he's, well, he's got a message that he wants to tell the people. <laughs> so I think that's the vibe. I just want to do him a leftover turkey. Leftover turkey? What? Uh, what? Let's talk about that, uh, Colin. You. You seem like a guy who <laughs> enjoys Christmas, I and Christmas. Uh, I remember you. You know, you'd be, you'd be, you know, usually by about October the fifteenth, you would be dressed up as some sort of Santa. As uh, yeah. this uh, a Christmas? How you do? How you taking the the restrictions? And also, I, I was just, what, what do you think of that? Of the comment that I made recently on David Blair's status about. It always ends in tears with a ginger girl. Is that a pun that you'll be taking forward and maybe passing off as your own? I, I, I do believe everything else does send in tears with a ginger girl. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll have Christmas. I've got three Christmas trees up this year. Um, so I'll probably put on the internet if you want to have a look at them. Three <laughs> Christmas trees? Three Christmas trees, yeah. Is there a, is there a, is that a bit num numerology? Is there like, a, is three the magic number? No, for, in order to have a generate a good Christmas, it's a too much time, my man. But I need to have three trees. Um, it was going to be five, but with the numbers of the bands and stuff like that. But um, uh, there's rooms in the house. Can I just say, Mark, that Colin is a Christmas crasher? <laughs> he, he crashes no, a, cra no, a Christmas cracker, a Christmas crasher. A Christmas crasher. He crashes <laughs> other people's Christmas. He'll stand outside folks' houses like with nice Christmas trees, <laughs> passing it off as his own. He might, you might be sitting there at Christmas Day and he just appears like with his own knife and fork and hat already on. He's a Christmas crasher. Beware, people. <laughs> and people, people, it's, people should be, be very careful, especially with these tier four restrictions. And uh, just if if you do see Colin at the door, maybe leave him a carrot through the letterbox or something, but don't let him in the house. Uh, it's a bit dangerous in this current climate. Uh, Vanilla Johnson, so what we've got here is a situation whereby, you know, I personally was thinking, well, if you're going to cancel festival, festival season, just cancel Christmas as well. Let's just fuck it. If we're going to ruin my life, let's just ruin everyone's life. Which I think a lot of people were thinking as well. But now, now I suppose Christmas is coming nearer. I think there's an element of should we just pretend, just cancel Christmas this year and we'll focus in 2021? Or is it a case of life's been shite this year? Let's have double turkey. Let's have double selection boxes. What do you think, Vanilla Johnson? Oh, it's all about the doubles. Life has been utter shite this year. Um, taking the day to actually see my mum and dad in a house for the first time in six months. I'm going to stuff myself with turkey that I'm not cooking for this year, France. And add chocolate from sunrise to sunset, which is only actually about six hours because it's December. But Well, I, I did actually, I, I got a, a big, you know, the big, the big tins of chocolates for as a gift. And now I can't safely deliver that gift. So, you know, I just, I'm just going to eat that chocolate now. And that, that made me feel a wee bit Christmassy. I think that there's nothing wrong with that. Is there? No, definitely a double. No. Christmas. There's been a double, a year of doubles. It's, what there's about, a, there's what a double, this? There's a double cheeseburger, there's a double cheeseburger, the double quarter pounder, the double, a double cheeseburger, though. There was a double down from 
Oh, lots of doubles, doubles, I don't know. There was uh, the double trip that to um, the Barney Castle, was it, to check in the eyesight for double vision double as well. Vision. So there has been a has been a maybe the, the numerology has been two. So maybe by having three Christmas trees, three beats two, and that's how we have a safe and happy Christmas. So I like your thinking, Colin, very much. We're what we've got now is a situation whereby uh, there's no Colin or Mustard uh, live Christmas gig this year. However, this is kind of like a Christmas miracle that we're using through Santa's technology, and I understand that you have uh, an L for a lack of. A better a word, uh, Martin Windybank, who's been working tirelessly in the background to bring a live Colin Muster and Dijon Five experience tonight. John, what, what is this about, and what can people expect tonight at ten o'clock? Ah, uh, it's a, just a brilliant. Uh, I just Martin's basically captured a Christmas night out, starting off with just outside the bars and taking you inside past. Medicine men sound checking, Stanley Odd sound checking, to the madness of backstage at our gigs, to the gig itself where we, we got inducted into the Barrowland Hall of Fame and we had an amazing night. We had all yourself and other guest rappers up, like Dave Hook for Stanley Odd and Johnny Cypher and David Case One. Uh, and it just it captures a, a Christmas night out and uh, it's good. Hopefully it'll give folk a wee a wee live music boost because uh, it certainly gave me a wee boost when I, I saw it for the first time. And I'm looking thanks forward. to Martin as well. We've been keeping the Dijon alive for the summer with the Korea documentary part and the, the, uh, the yeah, yeah. video that we managed to record safely in the summer. He's with done all the special appearance. Yeah, this stuff looks amazing, man. I've still not managed to catch up. There's been so much footage. It must have been, it must have been running the camera all the way through it. Aye. Uh, packs in his backpack just to keep filming us. Because I think he's on number five or six of the, the shows, but he's it's, it's still only a third of the way through the trip. You know, there's so much more to that. Aye. There's probably about 15 episodes by the time it's finished. <laughs> Especially if you add in Gary Morton on One Man Journey. One Man Journey. Yeah, a spin-off. He even got a oh, spin-off yeah. series. <laughs> Well, um, I recommend everyone checks out. It's uh, Gary Mortimer's one man journey. <laughs> uh, I'm not really sure where he's going, but he's getting there slowly but surely. He's getting to the the journey. Uh, he's getting there eventually. But yeah, shouts to Martin Windybank, who's who's still been busier than ever uh, during this period. Aye. Still bringing that new entertainment. He's actually got a new Christmas song with James Windybank that's confused me. I, I just woke up though. We'd been um, we did the a capture works gig. I was very tired, I was in the middle of a very deep sleep and then I had to evacuate my house and then I, I had to sit in a car and I checked the internet and what was there but a, a James Martin Christmas miracle that I couldn't get my head around, it was too early for me to process that but I'll maybe, we'll maybe play that later on tonight to see what exactly is going on there. I just oh, want to tell everyone, good. if you're watching us on Facebook just now, we're, we're just about to cut off Facebook because uh, well, we're, we're, we're having some issues with Facebook in general. I think society's been having issues with, with uh, Facebook in general. Oh, Facebook. So, so we're, we're done with Facebook. We are all, we're all about YouTube these days. We just had a thousand subscribers. So if you want to watch the rest of the show, go to youtube.com forward slash you call that radio. Hit the, the big red button and stuff like that. Uh, because that's where we're going to be for the rest of the show. I just want to play another little video just now to give people a chance to, to move over to YouTube if you are on Facebook. And there's so much stuff. Colin has sent me a lot of stuff from uh, the videos that we could maybe play. What do you think, Colin? I'll let you, you decide since you're the one that sent the videos over. Well, the one I love the most, that the, the dance-off video there from the Barrowlands in 2015. I think that was one of my first, my best dance -off. Not best, but my favourite dance-off. Um, and that, the there's been a lot of dance offs. How many dance offs has there been? That's so many. That that one was was filmed, and I think we're lucky we filmed it. That was the one with the alligator, the alligator, in fact. The alligator. The alligator. The alligator. 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 Yeah. A lizard you can fun. trust. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> and I don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Glasgow Barrow ones. If you're on Facebook, go to youtube.com forward slash you call that radio. We'll be cutting off there and doing the rest of the show from here. Uh, that was maybe. And I think. Go back to the start. Okay, yes. 
Come on, must be on five. Life in the Barrowlands. Give me a wee taste of what you expect tonight. Come on, just go here we go. Make new friends on the telephones. Make new friends on the telephones. Make new friends on the telephones. Up in Monday's here we go. The girl punches the punches the punches the go. Can't think of the funny hole. Jump up, 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 up. Monkey came on over, sitting in the corner, dancing on the ship. Pop, 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 day to day. Woo, running, running, I'm running still. Is that guy there? Can we get him up here? Get him up here. That guy there. Here he comes. That's a dance move. It's a dance move called smelling your own bar. Right, this is how it goes, everybody cough him, smelling your own ball. Oh, 
You call that radio, radio, radio. More like a TV show, TV show, TV show. Right. Hey. On almost every night, every night, every night. It's gonna be streaming live, streaming live, streaming live. You call that radio, radio, radio. More like a TV show, TV show, TV show. This is You Call That Radio TV. It's a Christmas miracle with Colonel Mustard and the Dijon Five. We have switched. We've got rid of Facebook, Periscope, all that stuff. We're exclusive on YouTube right now. No more Facebook. It's all about YouTube. I think that's what the great conjunction was about in the stars last night. I don't know if you've seen that. I missed it. Oh, the of, of YouTube. Yeah, well, there was a whole special three-hour or so episode we did last night about it, where we learned to understand what it all meant. Oh yeah, I've, I've got the same poster as, um, as Chris Allen, it's on last night. Brilliant stuff. Yeah, We're talking about the jingle we just heard there as well. Well done, Colin. Oh, thanks very much. It haunts you my, never, it haunts you, you my dreams, it haunts my dreams that you, you call never that played the jingle. Full thing. <laughs> you never played the full thing. Well, that's because it's six I minutes bit, long. I do a bit of rapping at the end of everything. But it's Christmas rapping. Yeah. It's not really, it's not really it's rapping. It's like if Cliff Richard was rapping. I did want to kind of release that as a Christmas single. I thought that would have been good. It might have you not. You call that Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. Christmas. Or I was going to, I was going to ask you, Gordy, if he wanted to add a bit of, you know, sleigh bells or whatever that sound as you get in Christmas songs, just to kind of for a few days. But it's a lot of work just for, for me to play a couple of times during like, the week. And you know, he doesn't really, he's not. I don't think, he, I don't think Gordy's up for that right now. I mean, he's not really doing that stuff right now, so I doubt it. He's going to do a Christmas thing for me. But we got the, the we just watched the, the dance off, which. A little known fact, but you know the bit where it goes, evening times. It's actually saying DJ Five, I believe. True or false? False. Um, evening yeah. times. It's not saying evening times either. <laughs> What's it saying? No, what, 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 it's the example from Pulp Fiction. It's, uh, it's from Pulp Fiction. It's the. Ladies and gentlemen, now the moment you've all been waiting for. It's the world famous Jack Rabbit Slims. Twist contest. But that's not what he says. He goes, evening times. We play back. <laughs> what bit of is he saying? Is, is it, aye, because he, he samples that again where it's just the, uh, what is it, Greg? Is that the ladies and gentlemen bit that sounds evening aye, times-ish? Aye, it's ladies, ladies and, and aye, gentlemen. Aye, that's ladies so and gentlemen. So it's, evening aye, it's, times. Evening aye, times. It seems like there's a syllable out. Because I heard I mean, evening times, then I went, for years I was thinking it was evening times, and then one day I had an epiphany, I went, well, why would he be, he wouldn't be playing evening times, maybe this is a DJ5 moment where he's writing, he thought, I'm going to get my name all over this, DJ5. It, it, it did go, f- it's ladies it did, and gentlemen, welcome to the Jack, whatever, that sounds it's, like it's just ladies and gentlemen, although DJ5 did go through that phase of, 
just walking about Glasgow in the eighties, sampling Evening Times newspaper sellers. Evening <laughs> <laughs> Times, yeah. Like you know what? Yeah, Times. <laughs> they used to, yeah, they used yeah. to shout. Yeah. They didn't yeah. shout. They didn't shout Evening Times either. It would that's, always no, be that, something. That was, the, that was the tra- Jack Rabbit's tra- lunch. Tra- Aye, they they said Jack Evening Times. <laughs> Jack Rabbit. Ladies and gentlemen, the devil got his. No, but that is true. There was a guy particularly at, at Central Station because I used to get off there at work every day and I would hear, and it was a... And I think the trick is, is that you're just like, what is that? Every day, and you'd be like, oh, right, it's Evening Times guy. Because I think if they said Evening Times, you would just block it out and you would just be like, oh, it's someone selling me a newspaper that I don't want. You know, I usually... Mean, you just hit the bills. That's how the Kaiser Chiefs were formed. We came up the leads, leads, hi to the Central Station. Yeah, and I also remember, it's also, also quite strange headlines because I, I don't know, especially in those days, the Evening Times. It's Evening Times. Uh, DJ Five. They were just saying DJ Five. Uh, <laughs> I remember just noticing that there was always this kind of propaganda that would, would appear. It would be things like, oh, the Barrowlands is going to make me turned into a, a 50 million pound casino. And people were like, nah, no having it. And it's like, well, uh, the Barrows might be turned into a uh, 50 million whatever. And people were just like, nah, nah, we, we, we want the Barrows to stay as it is. And I don't think, you know, normally the, the media and people can offer fancy, flashy things to replace the Barrows. But the people of Glasgow are just aren't tolerating at this point, are they? Nah, no chance. Nah, we need to keep the Barris. I think it's, uh, the Barris is owned by Margaret McIver Limited, so it's still with it. And that, so as long as that family want it to be there, it will be there. Yeah. It might, might need a bit of a refurb at a point, but even that, I, don't, I love it the way it is. And I think it's just there's all that. The, the, the history tapes for people that don't know about the Barris, it's, the, it's where many people's grandparents eloped or great-grandparents had their Aye. first ballroom dancing. I think it's where everyone, certainly of our generation, went to their first gigs, their first proper gigs. It's where, and it also, the, the, the whole thing that goes with it of the, the actual bar is market as well, just the whole thing is, is important. And I think that in any other city or any other part of Glasgow would have been totally gentrified by now. And it seems like there's, there's been quite a good balance. I mean, I know that I, there is a bit of gentrification going on there, but it seems like the, the, the staff at the bar is at least, although some of it's been controversial, I think the the, the staff at the bar is are also quite forward thinking in the fact that they want it to be sort of, sort of get a little of a bit of a, a facelift, so to speak. Uh, yeah, I think the market definitely needs to, you know, and I think there's plans in place to try and, you know, bring it up to, I suppose the, like the way some of the markets are in Camden and Croydon and stuff like that, where that'll attract more people the way it used to be. Uh, so it does need to move with the times a wee bit more, but not too much, do you know? Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's that feeling centre of uh, retaining what's amazing about somewhere, but also attracting people to it. The, the just the ruined it, mate. It was Warner Brothers, wasn't it? Warner Brothers, I think, they just paid hundreds of thousands of pounds for people to turn up with big cameras facing at the stalls to make sure they weren't selling, you know, Batman DVDs or whatever. <laughs> and, you know, that was that kind of changed things, I, I suppose. I a wee bit. Yeah, it was good times. It was good times. I've got some... I remember going to tune the fat single. The tune the fat single? I switched the stand to off, by the way. No, that's not the All right. No, no, it's definitely it's John. Like, it's, 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 uh, it's, uh, John goes, the corner goes nowhere without a leaf blower. It's a thing that he's, <laughs> uh, he's replaced. He's replaced his uh, lack of live gigs with a leaf blower everywhere <laughs> to kind of, sort of mimic the sound of an audience. Uh, validating his existence with a round of applause or something like that. We don't know. We, we've never really got to the bottom of it, but we can confirm that when you meet John, it's gone. 
And then, but fair play, I mean, it's, it's good to have a, it used to annoy me at the start of lockdown, but now it's kind of like a reassuring constant. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that again. Again. The whole time, jo- Colin's been creeping about with a, a, a razor getting John in trouble. And we've got, uh, Charlene's in the house, hello Charlene. We've got, Hi Charlene. Sh- Sharon's in the house. Hi Charlene. Got, Raymond Dito, that gig at the Barras was off the scale. Seen a lot of great artists there, but that had to be the best atmosphere I've ever, ever experienced. Well, uh, you can't get better praise than that. Cheers, Raymond Dito. Uh, was that the one that we played just before yeah. that? Uh, 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 Raymond Dito's talking about the one in 2018. Oh, right, uh, so we which... didn't play that. So it, wasn't, it wasn't like a kind of dig. Well, this one tonight. Oh, no. Oh. Well, you know, I've been there many times before and nobody could touch it. Not even the band that were on before you. I thought they were a bit. Hello, <laughs> uh, Petra says, baby doll. That's John's leaf blower, correct? Uh, it's a leaf sucker. It's not a leaf, leaf blower. <laughs> uh, you've given me a bitch just seeing you, John. It says, it oh, says Sharon. Thanks. That's lovely. Uh, boy, when he says a buzz in your mate, yeah, we know that. That's fine. That's just part of the, the Colin and Mustard lockdown experience. It's the ambiance. It's the ambiance. Uh, Jay, it's no just you, pal. Oh, yeah, this is a, a message from Jay. Where is she? Jay Coleman says, Is anyone else nearly greeting at the thought of one day being back at gigs like this? F- uh, fancing dancing together, I think that means. Yeah, or is it just me? I, I think, I, I, I think we can have a vote in that. I think the vote would be largely positive to, to bring in back those days. What do you say, Vanilla Johnson? Aye. Yeah, it's, 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 I think about it for a second, but why not? Why not? Why not? All right, we'll bring back the Barris kicks. Why not? Uh, Colin, Colin, if you are you are you willing to bring back if it's safe enough to do so, and um, the Barris invited you back, would you would you be happy for gigs to go ahead, or would you kibosh it? I'm I'm sorry, I'm really really want a gig to go ahead. I was watching that that Barris dance off video earlier on, and, uh, and I wasn't really crying. It was. Just, a crowd like that and just remember I'm playing at it. Uh, hopefully gigs will, will be back next year. I hope they will be. True or false, Colin? That microphone's not actually True. It's just a prop. True, yeah, this is for them. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute pro. Cool. You need to get a bookcase in the background. <laughs> You'll get on the BBC. You know, I thought I would... I, I thought that I was going to maybe do that for Christmas, but it, it does involve carrying a bookcase from another room and you know, hard labour is something that I do try to avoid. As uh, Del Moran says, lifting things is unpleasant, so you avoid it. <laughs> Apart from Arnold Schwarzenegger, he was the man that said, I'm going to not only will I lift the heavy thing, but I will continuously lift the heavy thing over and over again until I'm voted mayor of California. <laughs> uh, Bill Morrison says, it's that dancing Santa. Uh, Charlene says, wait, is that still John's laptop? Yeah, we've moved on from that. We're, we're, we're... <laughs> let, let John have his, have his fucking laptop. Uh, Charlene says, get some tech on. Uh, and uh, it's John's vibrator, says Colin. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> but, uh, the person is probably that automated sand. Oh, right, yeah, you're getting the blame for that. Fuck's sake. Uh, we've got the Barris was my first ever Colin Mustard gig. You're, you're so lucky to have big hair, John. Oh, uh, thank you. Big Scott back here as well. Jack Sosnag has given us some uh, uh, microphone advice here. Yeah, I don't. Th- yeah, we have tried this before, uh, Jigsaw Tiger. It's just something that we need to accept. It's you want me to go? Do you want me to go on in my phone? Know, we've tried this. We, not... we, we, no, man. We, we really we need to move on, on from phone, talking. Go on your phone. Uh, just that we could have a we could have about a four hour special and hug many of us talking about where the buzzing is coming from and how to fix it. <laughs> I'm not willing to put any more time on it. I'm not going to read out any more. Buzz of 2021. If you the if you buzz band, your, die 2021. On your phone, on but get the laptop. What was that, Tony Mobile? When it's just sketched us a buzz about the place. I think it was. Uh, Charlene says my first Colonel Mustard gig at the Barrows was also my first time at the Barrows was the night David Bowie was entered into the Hall of Fame what a bizarre Aye. moment that was when you know you've you've just played Colonel uh, an amazing gig you get well, did you just get inducted into the Hall of Fame not that, not that, that, night. Not, not oh, that night no no but Billy 
Billy Coyle uh, gave the award to Gavin Mitchell. Is that right? Yeah. Aye. And uh, he accepted that, that David was, Bowie's. That was that, that was wild, man. What 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 a moment that was. Aye. Is that not and it was, Aye, that was yellow. La- Aye, that was Yellowlands, wasn't it? That was Yellowlands or Gyrolands. Is that not the t-shirts? Gyrolands, <laughs> yeah. As, um, more oh, commonly that. known as Gyrolands. It'd be a good, it'd be a good documentary just about that gig because there's yeah, man, some... you know what? I wish, I wish, you know, there was things that happened at the time that we couldn't talk about, Aye. and I really wish that we recorded <laughs> it at the time because I genuinely can't remember all that stuff because I think a lot of the stuff that happens when you're just like there's so much chaos involved and. Uh, you know, things were moving at a very fast pace trying to <laughs> get things together. And then every so often you, you remember it and you have a wee flashback, well, fuck, that was... Uh, I mean, we're not going we, to go into everything. Aye, a- they'll, they, they, it would only be worth it if uh, Eli was interviewed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everything, everything else, do you know what I mean, is... Uh, well, I remember there was that... <laughs> there was that yeah that, that would be, an, a, be an interesting interview definitely that would kind of tie it all together but I mean I think at one point about a month before the gig was there not only like 200 tickets sold or something like that and I remember the, the, the fear was very real so if anyone doesn't know the bar is it's 2,100 I think, 19, I think it's 1,900 I think, I think it's 2,100 capacity but I think you're only like 1,900 tickets because you've got, you've got all the, the security and stuff so like we, we, with a few with a few weeks to go, there was only uh, like a tenth of that <laughs> sold, which is squeaky bum time, and the, as they say in the trade. But I all went up fine, and it sold out. So there should be a documentary Aye. about that. Uh, no, there was some good. Martin must have footage. Aye, there Aye, is, and there's, there's, good, there's good, there's good, there's good footage. Uh, uh, Jake backstage and all that, yeah. and on my use yeah. for. For Alabama three and then you know just the story the- behind it. And it's all folk that you're pal away now, but there was so many behind the scenes, like and even our kind of back and forth wrestling style uh, videos to to try and get it over the line were, were funny. And- well, they were funny. They were brutal. They were brutal. We were I, destroying I each other. Up. And Blair you know, wouldn't let Blair wouldn't let me do the. the I, rap. I know. I did. I wouldn't by default because you just. Couldn't do any more back. But well, you, drew I, I first blo- you drew first blood, and then, <laughs> and then then I went back, and then you went again, and then I went back. And the production then, levels got bigger each time. That's what yeah, I loved. The video was got better. The production levels got better. But I think it, the last the last um, part was not very high production. It was me and, uh, and a house party uh, with uh, Rory and the South Side. Well, it wasn't a house party, it was just me and Rory just decided to record the song right there and then. Um, curtains for the Colonel. Was <laughs> 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 uh, the Curtains for the Colonel song. And I think that was the, the point where, uh, you know, David Blair's like, right, okay, you, you cannot be any part of that. Which is fair enough because <laughs> then the day you are, you are a, a family-friendly band for people of all ages to enjoy. And, you know, I'm, there's not the same pressure on my shoulders, you know. We don't even have a target audience, so we don't have a, we don't really have an audience, so I can get away with a, with a little bit more. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Dean Mackey's asking if you need some tech support. Shouts to Ian Mackey and the Capture Works crew who have done a great job this year. They they have had the the live experience we had on Saturday uh, with, with uh, a host of acts, with Bob Scare closing the main stage uh, at the end, and we also Colin Mustard yourselves uh, played played it that year and. And what was that experience like, man? I mean, is that the only gig you played this year, or has there been anything else? Uh, we 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 done a gig in Greg's back garden for Belladrum, but that was more stripped back, and that, that was really enjoyable as well. But the Capture Works was the the only one that felt like a proper gig, and it was good seeing other bands like get to see Bomb Scare at it, and uh, the other acts that day was brilliant. So I yeah, that was yeah. just in the. the Aye, Celtic Connections, that was the last gig, wasn't it? Celtic Connections, January though. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that's the thing, I think that was only, that's the only, well, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm actually surprised that I have, because in my head I was like, that was the only gig I was at, but then when I went through, I was trying to get footage for my music, a music video I was doing, and I was going through my my photographs, and the like, like, I just realised how much live music was was about back then, it was just like, because obviously the Corner Mustard one was a big one, I think that was, 
the main one that I per- I did a couple of songs. I did a song with you guys. And then I think I did another cup. I did a wee set in the cools one night. And that was just because I went in for a pint and somebody pulled out and I got bribed to, to do a gig. And But when I was going through my phones, there was lots of wee gigs that I, that, that I did go to. But in Glasgow, when you're just talking about, you kind of take it for granted that there is going to be lots of music. So even though you don't think you've seen that much this year, there was still about, I don't know, five or six or seven gigs in the first two months. And that's the quiet time of the year for Glasgow. Aye. I think I'm hoping though when gigs come back, the folk that let's sit in the house and watch X Factor and go on, oh, I can't be bothered tonight. I'm hoping they will go out a wee bit more because every everybody you speak to, even people that maybe that's what they're normally into, every one of them it's like live music they want to see. Uh, I hope it kind of kickstarts a new sort of musical revolution in some ways. The Roaring Twenties. I said yeah. a thing about that today. A guy who was a more optimistic view of things. He was just saying that when you study the history of the way humans react to stuff like this, then that is how you get things like the Roaring Twenties. That is you get, yeah. you know, just because, I mean, there's, right now there's so many people that, you know, so many great bands out there that can probably call in a decent album or can create some decent music without trying too hard. But a lot of the time they're, they're recording this while they're on the run and balancing it with our tour schedules, with a bit of hedonism, with family life and stuff as well, and working real jobs and just, so that as a result, the music does kind of suffer a little bit. So now hopefully we've been able to work, work from home and really think about it. And the technology we've got is amazing as well, being able to send each other over, you know, uh, bits of music and, and lyric ideas and stuff. So I'm very hopeful that there's going to be a whole, a whole, a, 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 an amazing amount of music. New music's going to come out. There's going to be, Hopefully a massive demand for it as well, man. I'm excited about it. I'm trying not to get too excited. It's about getting that right balance in it because you don't... Right now, we're, I'm hopeful that we are going to have outdoor events in the kind of springtime. I think I, I'm expecting it. I mean, I'm not, I don't know why there's so many people surprised that Christmas has turned into lockdown. It was always an absolutely terrible idea. It was never going to work. And I think that we're going to have a bit of a lockdown now for <laughs> January. But I think people were right with January because nobody leaves the house in January anyway. And hopefully Aye, by the time well, spring yeah. comes, we can have outdoor events, even if it is a little bit shit, it's a bit of a couple of socially distanced rules or whatever comes up, but we'll be outdoors and then hopefully maybe we can have some outdoor festivals and then by the time the the autumn happens, we can have the, the sweaty gigs again. That'd be good. I'll take that. I'd like to take that. I'll take that. It'll be interesting Aye. to see how, how what music's like after after the lockdown because your experience is going to go into your music and... Well, it'll be good when music comes back, but it's going to be... Lots of songs about being so far away from the people happens. you love. Yeah, yeah. And how you want to be that. together for a good time. Or with the general... Yeah. I think just... so. There might be that, or it might just be a... Uh, do you know, it might be more about what people start writing about or what, what we crave Aye. as well. Do you know, like, the, the, what we have been maybe complacent and... Uh, the things that we take for granted, like now, well, do you know? So I'm, I, I can't even mind if it was the Enlightenment or it was like a big, basically after the plague and all that in Europe, everybody started wearing bright colours and there was festivals and it became like a big art movement and stuff like that. So um, it'd be amazing if like just folk just go wild and enjoy, I suppose, all the. All the good things life gives us. And I'm going to just put up a, a video just now. Oh, break all of the uh, we're at the forefront. Well, <laughs> you're hoping for the, well, you know, you're ready for the for the bright colours movement. Could it be the bright yellow movement? Could it be a brighter uh, shade of yellow? I love a luminous phase at some point. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm going to put up, you, uh, speaking of a luminous, you've got, Quite an illuminating video here in GT, aka Glitter Tits. Uh, I know was, that's maybe not the official name, but the yeah, Gre- it's Greta, Greta Thunberg. That's who it's. That's who it's named after. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Well, Greta, and um, how 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 was she involved in this? The making of this music video. Well, if you listen to the lyrics, it's about you know getting out of Earth because we're we're fucking it up. We're fucking our environment up. So. Uh, GT's got many different variables, but for me, that was one I thought about. And it's an incredible video. 
Like one of the, it's, it's, it's even uh, more incredible considering the, the situation that we've been in. Uh, we have just got a, a Celtic Connections was an incredible gig. We're so excited to hear some of the new material from the difficult number two. We'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. I was so hyped to hear it all during the festival season. Um, can't wait, and I'm sure that was saying can't wait to see it. Uh, J- Jay says, I didn't realise quite this year how much I rely on gigs and festival to keep my mental health reasonably on track. I mean, I was aware of that, to be honest. It's really an important part of, you know, I think for me, just dealing with the shitness of life and the mundane stuff is that just to look forward to a gig and that, that buzz that happens. And I know some people are, are more social than others, but I really, I love it. I love everything about it. And uh, yeah, hopefully it comes back. Mackie says if new tunes in the, in the 20s are it's half as good as the 90s, we're in for a bright future. I, I, think, it, I think it's happening. I think it's happened because I think what you've got, you know, for a, a cultural movement to happen, the reason it's probably not really happened on a big scale recently is because we're all uh, cut off into little different bubbles, our own different algorithms. And it's nice for like little niches that uh, do very well and stuff. But I think when you've got a situation where everybody's going through the exact same kind of feeling and can relate to it, you know, some people are going to react bad, but I think there's going to be a nice bit of empathy coming together and hopefully that results in some just good times where people will look out for each other. Uh, G- G- GT, good times. Good GT does stand for good times. Let's check out, let us know in the comments what you make of it. An uh, incredible video. And I think it's, um, who, who was involved with this? Martin Rindy Bank? Did he, did he had some Aye, help? Ma- oh. Martin directed it and a guy, Jack Strand uh, and Frankie Anderson helped with the animation. But I'm really chuffed with this one. It's brilliant. And Someone, and Gre- some people are calling it one of the songs of the year. Woo. If you think so, then you should vote. And the little link I'll leave in the comments for song of the year at the you call that radio end of year awards. I'll put that link in the comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made our escape, no time to worry. Not about the mission. 
special. It's all about the journey. The gamma rays went through my soul. Rock and roll into another world. Let us take you on a journey into outer space. Looking for the way now to save the human race. Take you on a journey, set your faces to stun. Yellow colors shining to me like the golden sun. Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters. Is that you, Daniel? Are you before me? Call that radio. You call that radio. This is the whole thing. This is, you call that radio, TV, GT, gin and tonic, good times, <laughs> Greta Thunberg, Thunberg, Greta, Glitter Tits. That's yeah. another name. Who gave that that name? Was that Gary? Uh, it's Gary Mortimer, sir. So. That's Gary Mortimer, Potter. Yeah. Mortimer, apart from your name. <laughs> Where is Gary? Where is Gary? Is he, is, I think he's anti Christmas. He's a uh, babysitting. So is he, is he, is he, is he hate Christmas? No, Gary, Gary likes Christmas. Gary's good to Christmas it. trees as well. Petra says, love it. Thanks, Petra. Mundito Thanks, says, Petra. great tune Thank and you, great baby. video. Jigsaw Tigers got the the brass section out there. Uh, so shout, shout out to uh, Vanilla Johnson. All about the brass. brass. Is this, brass this is your finest, finest moment for the brass section of the Dijon Five? Nah, there's more to come. I didn't ask you. We don't know what to do. I've actually been playing bass on that a couple of times when we played it live. This is not too much for the horn for us, but it is a cracking lift that we get just to play. Go for a, just, go for a, just go for a wee wonder. I suppose it's good though. It must be good to have one of those those songs that you can just go date in your sleep. No, no, I don't have to sleep during my gig. Do you, want, do you want something? You want something difficult to keep you entertained throughout the whole the whole song? I like those ones. I eh? just just going for it, well in it, come away with bust lips. West Side says Great this project. has got to be a hit. Great video. You can vote for it here. For song of the year, Do you call that radio song of the year. Someone's got to I'm win like it. On Euro, we're on Eurovision. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> four four. Wait, is that good? We got. Um, oh, four. Soapy's in the house. Merry Christmas, Yay. Soapy. Merry Christmas, Merry Soapy. Christmas, Soapy. Oh, there's a oh, couple of ladies here. We got Tam the Van. Tam the oh, Van. Dear, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Shouts to Tam the Van. We've got. Um, I, um, the Waynes need to grow up a bit and fight the power to get the full 90s vibe and we need some new drugs for the experience <laughs> and Westside has agreed with that any good culture shift needs a great new drug and I'm not talking about a vaccine although that'd be handy yeah I mean what is true I think you're, t- you're talking about the way that um, you, you look at every single generation you had, you had uh, cannabis you had speed you had uh, ecstasy acid and all these things there was a, and then then we had the uh, Ketamine, we get dubstep, and then, <laughs> and then we got yeah, the research not, chemicals. And not TikTok, the, no. TikTok, not the new drug. Well, TikTok is the new drug, but I suppose the thing about dubstep is that there's some, there is that cool wah 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 wah, you know, that wobble that sounds like like John's doing a lockdown interview or something. But that that <laughs> noise, I like, 
but it's not really enough for a for a whole drug you know what i mean so yeah i think we do need you know a drug maybe but maybe the vaccine is the drug just so that people can take all the drugs they used to take but with more vigor because i'd imagine that some people have a nice little break from, well, from maybe overdoing things i i think that's been good for a lot of people this year just taking a wee break for the chaos of you know what they get up to of the weekends well, I was going to say, I, mean, I was going to say, like, it's just, the, great, but just be yourself, do what you got to do to get to get through this. I mean, I, I'm going to, I've got a full tin of, full tin of quality street that I'm probably going to rattle tonight. You know, do what you got to do. <laughs> Definitely. I think talking about new drugs, like, there's like scientific research going into DMT and. Uh, magic mushrooms just now for depression and you know the UK are doing trials so I think it's about sense, sensible drug taking rather than you know we'll look at the amount of deaths there, there has been in Scotland, the UK probably the world because folk are just taking anything like street valium and mixing it with you know other shady drugs and painkillers and so I, I think it's about do you know, whatever your and drug of choice coke, is. Coke, the coke being cut with Aye. fuck knows what coke, Not the coke, coke in all, general, but... Coke can also crack kind of moving into different cities and stuff like that, but it's about... Like that, going, you know that, so you've got, you've got basically maybe just a more a more tolerant society taking taking a decriminalised look at drugs, so people are still being able to take, you know, if, if they are purchasing MDMA, they're getting MDMA, so it's going to be a strong type of MDMA and there'd be less paranoia about the whole purchasing of, consuming of and maybe with that people could be taking it in a safer way and also just in a more fun way and a more relaxed way and people can just get on with their lives rather than being judged or arrested. Aye, totally, totally. Or, or um, risking their lives by it being cut with some either too much, too little or just something they didn't even order. If someone's going to a drug dealer and they've not got, you know, MDMA or whatever it is, that's that's when a lot of people are making choices. Like, do you know, at the moment, a lot of heroin addicts are moving on to crack because that dried up a bit. But with that, you're, you're just seeing an increase in suicides and people's mental health completely deteriorating. So I think it, it's about giving people options, do you know what I mean, and choices and... We're, we're a long way off that, though, as a society, but I, th I think the more people are talking about it in a, a sensible way, wearing reindeer did antlers, you, the better. Did you see the... Is it, I didn't really see much about it in Facebook, but Twitter was was full of the... the, the is it the drugs minister who uh -huh. resigned or got sacked or resigned? Yeah. I was forced it. to resign. And that was quite interesting to watch because it was the, the recovery, shouts to all the recovery movement in Scotland. They just they just went for it. I know that, that Loki changed his, his Twitter feed name to Joe Must Resign or whatever it was. And Aye. it was he had to go because, I mean, I think the problem was is that not only was it the worst, I think it was the worst deaths in history, 1,200 or something like that, but also there was, it felt, I think the recovery movement felt that there was an element of just trying to spin it away and it would just go away. And it's somehow that, you know, it's been a bad year so it can go. But obviously when we're comparing it to other countries, what, what, I mean, do you think there is a reason why Scotland is so bad? I, I think it's so kind of multifaceted and it's not just a one thing that you can point the finger at. I felt a bit sorry for, for him, to be honest with you, because most, most politicians are just figureheads anyway. It's the people below them and then the people below them and then... Actually, the folk that are doing the work are people that, you know, the recovery network or, you know, nurses or social care workers on the front line. Uh, but if you've not got the drug, the right drug policies in place, then you're not going to affect that change. A lot of, I suppose, the SNP and the Scottish government's hands are tied, though, in what they can legally do. But I suppose things like this maybe are pushing them to go, right, well, what... How far are you prepared to go? Uh, but it's never never nice to see somebody lose their job. But when you've got that amount of kind of, I suppose, what's the word I'm looking for? Just, do you know, well, it's people just, it's, that... It's, 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 this is a... 
it's a, it's absolutely ridiculous results, and it's not. This is not a football I, manager. This is people's lives here. I, so I, I, it had to I, go. I, and I think I think people I, must I, I, see that it's nothing personal. It's just you're shite. You've done bad. It's time to go. You know, we've got to. You've got to kind of. People have got to believe that we can. We can do something new, and it's just it. who, who's who's going to replace that person. I suppose. At, you know, when when they're at that level, but also, and I, I think there there always has to be personal responsibility and societal responsibility as well. I don't think just going like looking at what our ministers doing to help this. You know, we we need to look at ourselves. We need to look at you know what's happening round about is are, are people challenging the drug dealers in the street? Do you know what I mean? That have sold drugs to these people? Do you know? Like people don't see it. Well, you're you're just a junkie. It's like like addiction's a real problem. It's a real disease. Like people are using drugs when it gets really bad as an escape because they've got a disease. But to the majority of the people in the street, oh, they're just a junkie. They're a waste of space. Why are we even bothering to help them? And that's also what's causing most of the problem. That's the education. I- and the I did that we them need to change as a society. Not never as has here, it been, but. never has it been so um, more obvious. Was when uh, it's a, you know, John, the 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 drugs at Narcon, Narco, like the drug that people carry with them to stop Naloxone. overdose. Yeah, to reverse, no. to reverse the overdose. So, you know, and it's quite common for places and fives and stuff for the, the police to have yeah, one of them. See when the, can you? Um, for, for people to have them in the, you know, like place to carry them in case people do overdose. But in the case of your, uh, like Glasgow, they were going to roll it out to Glasgow. Glasgow police could, could, could let them have it. And if you look at the comments in Glasgow Live, I know you should never look at the quote, the comments in Glasgow Live, but it's, it's absolutely, people are just outraged that the police might, you know, save someone's life. So... There is a, a total stigma, and I think that maybe the media's got to take a lot of the blame for that stuff as well. <laughs> I was in the States, they, I went to Vegas, like, they've got a much better attitude to it, like, because cannabis is legal there now, like, you can only, you can buy it from licensed properties, you can only consume it on licensed properties, you can't walk down the street smoking a joint, you can't smoke it in your hotel, but if you, like, look up one of the one of the shops i remember their name being instagram because i thought that was brilliant they will come and pick you up at your hotel take you to the shop where you can legally buy weed smoke it and then they'll take you back to where they picked you up and let you go on about your day that, yeah there's, got, there's, better ways, there's better ways to do this stuff angelo uh, made the point he was only in the scottish government for a couple of years it's been going on for years before that it's not his fault alone absolutely not i mean i think that many people were saying like, it's not personal Technically, the results, he's only been in the job for a year because this is the kind of last year's results. Aye. What it is, is it's sending a message out that this just is not acceptable. So anyone new coming yeah. in doesn't get to go, oh, I've got a five-year job here. It's like, no, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to try, do something radical. Don't just, I think there's too much, um, well, let's test a thing out. Let's try, let's um, do surveys and um, let's get, you know, let's try a little trial, a mini trial out over there. And then we'll, we'll talk about it for 12 months about how that trial went. And I think what it just suggests is, like, wait, 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 here, let's just speed this process up and just be a bit more radical and, and, and take some chances that they might actually save people's life and and mm-hmm. make things better. Yeah. I, I, I totally agree with that, but I also think, you know, the Scottish government are trying to bring things forward, like the safe consumption room in Glasgow that is built and ready to go, but that the Home Office aren't al- allowing that to happen. Uh, there are other things coming in, like Buvidal, which is an uh, injection, like buprenorphine. It's an opiate blocker, and that, that's that's coming really soon. Again, they couldn't get home office licences, but there's other ways round about that, uh, like where you can, you know, a chemist can stock it and stuff like that. So there are, you know, it's, in some ways, you, I think Scotland are starting to lead the way. But unfortunately, there's so many bad drugs out there. There probably isn't enough being done by politicians and, you know, councils and stuff like that. But I think it, there's, it's so multifaceted, this thing. 
And I think we all need to take personal responsibility for it because, you know, we, we don't want our kids to be brought up in, in these environments. Uh, but I think having, like, my, my day job's obviously working as an addiction nurse. And what I, I, I used to think that like, addiction was a disease, but I, I don't so much have that point of view anymore. Uh, I think that it, it is treating pain, though. People are using these things for that. And I think that's the thing we need to look at more as well. Why are people getting to that point? Do you know what trauma have they experienced? Gabor well? Mate. Aye. What's that, man? Gabor Mate. Wait, have you heard of him? I don't know. Gabor Mate is a, he's a, he's a an, I'll, I'll send you a link, man. He's a really good. Uh, I'm, I'm listening to an audio book he did, amazing. Just talking about ad addiction and the trauma. And yeah, just. He's just a very honest book he did about it because he talks about all his um, misconceptions and his harsh judgments that he made that, that doesn't make him look very good, which is always quite refreshing to, to read about and, and hear about. But we're getting some comments in about uh, get get Santa back on. Uh, yeah, so uh, sorry, Vanilla Johnson, let's get Santa back on. No, he's gone. He's <laughs> gone, he's gone, he's back, he's, he's back dancing again, that's fine. Because Santa, Santa got to blame for the blame for the, for the for the noise earlier on. <laughs> Which is outrageous, just giving Santa the blame. Hashtag got, sack, sack, sack Santa. Big sack Santa. Go, don't sack Santa, big yeah. sack Santa. Santa got, <laughs> now, uh, well, what a quick segue would maybe be to going from, you know, government <laughs> intervention and safety is the biggest ever across the road in the history of the world, I believe that uh, it broke the Guinness Book of Records. Is that true or false? For the longest, the biggest ever crossed the road in the history of crossing the road. It's true. Okay. It's true. Nobody's ever crossed the road like this. So if you need any advice, whether it's drugs or road safety, you need to get these guys. It's Colonel Mustard and Jean from Belladrum. Right, keep going, keep going, Amiba. We need a wee bit of How many space? people were here? I, I've heard various what? stories. Why are you waiting on me? I think it's um, the last one was 500,000 like people are here. 500,000 people. <laughs> uh, David Blair, maybe more? No, maybe da we'll get, is David Blair here? Can we get David Blair on? Gone. David's <laughs> not here, I don't think. David's not going to appear. We've got. Right, here we go. You ready? Okay, let's go. Let's go and watch this. So nice and safely, when I say cross the road, we're going to do it nice and slowly. A nice gentle meander across the road, okay? There's plenty of time. David, you going out there? It's a nice wee bounce up and down. Oh! 
It's actually a, a, a podcast. What the fuck's a podcast? You know, it's um, kind of like a radio show. Oh, that. Radio. <laughs> yeah. Just right. you can do something like that. I couldn't help it. By injection inside it. This is you call that radio TV. It's a Christmas miracle with Colonel Mustard and the Dijon Five. Just a wee shout out to tomorrow's show. We've got Max Thompson, Motherwell Boy, now a hip hop star in Toronto. Can't wait to hear his story. Then on Christmas Eve, I think I made a better flyer for that one. But you get the idea. It's the awards ceremony. And I've put a link in the comment right now if you want to vote for your favourite act. Maybe you want to vote for GT to be Song of the Year. That's how you do it. I've just put that link here. Click that to, to make your vote on your favourite stuff of the year. Also, we've got Boxing Day, which is this. It's um, an amazing lineup. Apologies for the flyer. I did that on the fly during the show the other night. And then this is, um, that's what she said. It's Becky Wallace hosting The Girl Who Cried Wolf, Josephine Sillers, Haver, Catherine Rudy, and Laura Murray, and more to be announced as well. And uh, what about Hugmanay? There might be a Hugmanay. There might not. We don't know exactly, but we're working on something to, to bring the party vibes on Hugmanay night. And um, yeah, and um, if you want to, we're trying to get to 200 patrons to make the Christmas miracle come true. If you've enjoyed these shows this year, I think we've done 180 shows this year, then the miracle is within grasp. We need seven more people to sign up to patreon.com forward slash you call that radio. And you will be entered into those regular raffles. In fact, there might be a regular raffle tonight. I don't know how John's feeling about that. Have you got some uh, uh, something raffleable? I uh, probably I've probably got some CDs kicking about. Or There's probably I, probably that. <laughs> thanks for the, the the enthusiasm. There was just palpable. Just well, don't maybe go to the post office. Not this week. Oh, that's some good stuff. That's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's that's a couple of days time. I'll have like three or four links. Africa sets. Radiator key. Yeah. <laughs> radiator key. You can bleed your radio. Radio. Radiator. <laughs> Jackie Chan. Oh, that radiator. What Jackie Chan book? I, I am Jackie Chan. Well, we just watched Bella Drum cross the road, which was uh, the Guinness Book of Records for having over a million people crossing the road at the same time. <laughs> what was that? What was that? Somebody could win now twelve. Now twelve? Wow! <laughs> now twelve? Whoa! That is pretty is cool stuff. Is that? Uh, you know, the associated smiley apple. <laughs> See the Jackson Five on it. Made that's by and then just dished part of it. An apple. An apple. Salt and pepper. Push it. Good kind of apple. Oh, okay. Apple. Car wash. 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 Car wash.
we've seen Belladrum there and the Cross the Road World Guinness Book record attempt. And uh, what, what, what an experience that was. Obviously, I'd, I'd been, I haven't been to, was that the first time I've been to Belladrum since? I've been once before, but it was uh, years and years and years ago. Uh, actually, Paul Heaton from the beautiful South, he he stuck me on the guest list. That's the name the of name drop. Is my name drop? Paul Heaton stuck on the guest <laughs> list for uh, Bella Drum Festival many years ago, many, many years ago. And I went along and it was quite late when I arrived on the Saturday night. And I just assumed that there was going to be a Sunday party. So I just partied in the Saturday <laughs> night. Didn't really see any bands. Looking forward to Sunday. I woke up in a random tent with people saying, Gah! it was pushing the rain. I didn't have any of my stuff on me. I had no idea where everyone else was. And I was stranded in Bella Drum. I managed to hitch a lift back to the which my car broke down, that was in, and then uh, some some uh, knight in shining armour did finally fix the car, and the song that played when the car restarted was Scrubs, no Scrubs by TLC, and that song was staying with me for this way because it was a moment of joy. Section. And, was back on. and then I get dropped off at Perth, which is as best I was going to get from the Highlands. And who did I meet in the first pub I went to? But Gordy was sitting there. So we managed to figure out. I was, I was offered a deal by uh, the Green Room, which was, if we'll just give you drinks all night if you host an open mic night tonight. So we, we hosted an open mic night and got fed and watered, a place to stay for the night, and then um, so, squared it up the next day. So that was my Belgium experience. It was kind of bizarre. It wasn't like I, I got to wander around, but I didn't get to really enjoy it. But also, I think that was it was a very young festival at that time, just compared to what I've seen or maybe it was just because I was um, a younger person that, that missed it. But it's such a big over. festival, much stuff going on, a bit of something for everyone. And um, it was quite terrifying because I went from playing my gig, at, I played just like a wee the poetry stage to about, I don't know, 60 people. And I, I was actually clashing with you. I was like, what is the chances of me actually clashing with you? So I clashed with you, did my, my set for about half an hour, and then I ran down through the crowd to go on stage and... I don't know, I was a bit out of breath and it was roasting. And I did actually do, did feel a bit apprehensive before I went on that stage. But once you're on that stage as well, it's like that is probably, that is the biggest crowd I've ever played to. That it's it's almost like your, your human brain can't handle how many people that is in a good way. So it's like, it's, you're not nervous really at all because when you're actually doing it, it's like, you can only see so much in the scope of your vision. Would you agree with that? Yeah, it's like a lot of people, you yeah. can't like, really, you don't know who's, who's there. Yeah, it's, it's, probably, it's, probably hard to, it's probably hard to play to 10 people in the 13th old cafe and just to play to Belgium. Yeah, I remember No Gallagher saying Aye. that back in the day. Because you're making eye contact with folk you know. Right. You don't yeah. want to, and you know they'll, they'll be disappointed in you if you fuck up. Whereas yeah, there's that many people, all, they don't notice. Because I suppose if you've got, a, if you play in a room of uh, 100 people even, it only takes 10 people not to be enjoying it visually. You can see they could maybe throw you off a bit. But there's just no possible way to understand. Maybe there was, you know, a million people hating it, but it's hard to tell. You're just like, ah, oh, there must, there must be. There's enough people there. They must be enjoying it. And obviously, the fact that they're they're they're, um, they're copying all your instructions, John, suggests that they either like it or or they're terrified of you. <laughs> I I know I've got good crowd control kind of skills, but I it's, I think what you guys are saying is completely true that. When you're out there, it just doesn't it doesn't seem real that there's that many people. So you just kind of quickly forget about that. But the, one of the most nervous gigs I ever played was just before that uh, first main stage, Bella Drum, though, where I, I made the mistake of looking out and it was like, oh, how, how am I going to do this today? Uh, but I love that level of excitement, though. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes at Belladrum, it takes me about a song to fully just chill out and get into it. Uh, you get a wee bit of the kind of, ooh, in your voice in the first song, but it's always amazing. Every year, it's just one of our best gigs. I think that's the easiest. Sorry, sorry, Vanilla. So I think this year's Belladrum was the easiest because it was just my garden with my wife and my animal. Aye. <laughs> Aye, but even your, your neighbours... We're loving it. Keep on the fence. <laughs> Did you charge them? You know what I mean? They get a free gig. No, next time they're getting charged. 
Aye, they're neighbours. Yeah, they, they do it. They... Well, this is a, do you know how tough this has been a year? It's been a, year, a tough year for musicians, and you're just one free, free entertainment. Yeah, the yeah, same. The got comments. <laughs> you're playing Belladrum next year, and you're playing where else is it? Have you got in, Play, in playground there? that same weekend? Wow, that playground yeah. lineup looks amazing as well. Actually, the, that Belladrum weekend this year did actually make us some money. Um, because my, my wife crochets and has got a, an Instagram page um, she posted that she was making something while watching the band and then we shared it on our Instagram. Someone got in touch through our Instagram and was forwarded on to my wife who's like, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting a baby, can you make me a blanket? So she ended up taking a commission and making a beautiful rainbow blanket for this woman. Amazing stuff. And then she had, like, did, I should only charge yeah. for the price of the yarn, like it wasn't actually making money. Right. Hey, can, I just, like, can I just can I just say that I that's a that is brilliant. Uh, you should put links up to collect stuff in the comments as well. I thought that, that was that, I'll, I'll bring the I'll bring on the screen if you do that. I thought that was Colette. I hadn't realised that was a mirror in the background. I thought Colette was like Burton for home in the background. But it's, it's just because your just because your hair is so long. I, I genuinely thought that was Colette Burton for home. Like I'm just quite casually, but it's because your hair is so long. That's Santa. All right, no, the mirror, the mirror right, okay, right. Someone's asking about: Are you raffling Santa? Says Charlene. No, Santa's a fa family heirloom. I've had that since I was a wee boy. Family, I'm sorry, not for sale. I stole it from my mom. Maybe, maybe if we get, maybe if we get 210 patrons, he'll let us raffle it. But he's not doing it for 200. So, Sophie, this is a, a dream lineup for um, Sophie, the, the playground lineup. James and Colin Mustard, which I believe is two of his favourite bands, on the same stage at the same time. Uh, that would be Sophie's my roadie for the weekend. Sophie is in Rudy. Also, if you need a if you need a if you need a, a singer for um for these are not the drugs, I'm I'm available. I believe I'm available. I'll check my diary for 2021. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is the one thing right. I'm actually quite enjoying about it is because I don't really like planning ahead. So it's actually quite good that there's nothing and I've given up on having things in the diary, it's over. Hopefully Boomtown ask us back. They've not really confirmed that though. That was only really it was because I was just what focused on Boomtown and European tour. The European tour's completely destroyed, and there's no way I'm going to be able to redo that. Maybe the venues will do it again, but I'm definitely there's no point even trying to approach that until it's happening. It's different if a festival is actually announcing a the lineup, then you might as well add yourself to it. But I noticed that in the album, these are not the drugs is on the new album, and I'm assuming that I'm not on it. Have you just cut me from the, the song and the album uh, and the history of Colin Mustard? We no, to make a, we to make a uh, album. It's, a, it's a new version, mate. We still love you. You're amazing. We still love you. But we needed a new version. Is it because version I talked about the wrong thing? Like I didn't understand the concept because when I was doing this song, all I knew was the song was called These Are Not The Drugs. And in a live experience, it's normally, you know, you can't really hear the lyrics too well. Normally I'm on stage. So I was just hearing you going, these are not the drugs. The rest of it, I wasn't really sure what you were talking about. So I started singing about accidentally taking a line of ketamine instead of cocaine. So it didn't really make <laughs> sense when you're talking about legalising drugs and stuff, because that, that could still happen even if drugs were legalised. So is it because I, I, I missed the concept completely? No, I, I, I lo love the fact that everybody's just written their own thing for it. Doogie's bit's amazing as well. I suppose given that the album, like the first album, wasn't that family friendly, but families listen to it and they fast forward. So he puts, let's say, you and Doogie's bit on this album. It's, it's one that we would need to shove up a, you know, parental warning sticker on. Whereas, with, you know, who is, have, have, you, have you replaced this way? We've, we've got David Case One, who David's been up doing his bit for. for you know, years now, so it's good to finally get him on something. Uh, Aunt Thomas, we don't sick fly as well, has done an amazing job, but it's just adds to the legacy of these are not the drugs, mate. Yeah, and it's yeah, all people are part of the story. Aye, that sounds all right, but I, I, I like the older version before they were famous, you know. Uh, no, I know, I, I do agree with that as well, but it's good to see case one, it's good to see him getting 
a well-deserved slot on the album because she's been putting the work in for ages. And uh, yeah, good to see that. And, and also, Anne, shouts to Dope Sick Fly, who were on, who yeah, played an amazing set on, on Saturday. And I think, well, you know, you don't really know how it's going to go, especially when it's acoustic and, you know, there's not really any gigs on go. But they, they're just uh, absolutely smashing it. They, as a two piece, it works really well. That it's um, you know, there's no backing singer or, or it seems like there's no front man anymore, which I, I would have maybe said was a bit different two years ago. It seems like there's two front men now, which uh, makes it just a really exciting live thing. And hopefully, we'll get that set uploaded to the YouTube channel in the future. Uh, we've got Jay. Jay says, "If I learn Doogie's bit and these are not the drugs, can I come and do it?" There's there's no <laughs> way. I there's no way you'll be able to learn it, Jay. You could learn the lyrics, but the way... Uh, we, we can all do Mark, Mark's bits, brilliant. Ah, you can do my bit. My bit's easy, can, you know what I mean? We, we could do we my can bit. All, we can all do it. You can write but, that, in, you can write that in, in 30 seconds and then just uh, fart it out your ass. Fill with whiskey. No bother, but Doogie's bit. Oh, no, that, that's, a bit, that's something else. It was actually quite hard to, to take Doogie off the album, you know what I mean? Mark, it was fine. It was like, well, just getting placed in. Obviously, I'm flying. There's plenty of people who can replay Mark's bit, but Doogie's bit, you know, it's really like a tough decision. You've got to make those tough decisions if you don't want to clap on a parental advisory sticker and lose sales and potentially alienate some of your audience and convenience some of your, your fans to fast forward a bit, maybe have a naughty word or a, or a, a, a content they didn't completely understand because he's no, no the smartest, isn't he? <laughs> I thought he was going to take the wrong drug. Yeah, we get it, we get it. Uh, but uh, to call my friends, uh, one of my only talents has been able to sing the dilly, dilly, dally bit without fucking it up. And uh, do you know, it's interesting because... Well, I, maybe I, you would, Jay. Maybe you I would, like if you can do, I can do that. I do that bit as well for, don't, for Cross the Road. I don't know if you are even aware of this, but in fact, Colin will be. I think Colin was in the band. But one day we were walking about <laughs> doing the ravel and it was my, my day off. I was like, wasn't doing anything. Joe went, are you actually not playing it? I went, no, it's my day off. I'm just going to, you know, have a beer and watch some bands. And then... Uh, I think it was Nelson came running up to me. Mark, what are you doing? I went, well, nothing. But can you play? A, can you get a band together? You're on the main stage in half an hour. Yeah. And I think we got Colin, Jamie, Shuni, maybe someone yeah, else, Shuni, and someone else. And we we played like we played a gyros, a couple of gyros tunes. And then obviously Colin was there, so Colin, we did a couple of Colin and Mustards. And we did do Cross the Road, we got the crowd to Cross the Road. It's actually quite easy, quite an easy song to sing as well. When, when, you when you've got a great, you know, song like that, that's already a modern day <laughs> classic, it, it is. The crowd are just, you know, the crowd are just going to go with it because of the... The prestige yeah, of this the a, tune. A classic, you know, <laughs> just a, a classic. People running from the other side of the the, the festival to, to get a, to get a glimpse of crossing that road. John, uh, you, 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 you really see your head in the picture. What's that? You, you can only see my head. You can barely see your head. It barely fits in anymore after all that cross the road. All right, all right, all right. That was a good. Okay. <laughs> Jay, Jay, let's do this right now. Jay, come on, come on, you want to come on the show and prove that you can do the dilly dally? Then the, the challenge is there. Jay, click this link. This click is this. I can can Colin doing. do it? I reckon, I reckon uh, oh, Vanilla can do it. Dally. Go dilly dally, or you'll drive me do lally like the lot of people for your pally wally. Don't dilly dally, or you'll drive me do lally like the lot of people for your pally wally. Don't dilly dally and you drive me do lally like the lot of people for your pally wally. Don't dilly dally and you drive that's the best one. <laughs> that was good. Maybe get you up to that, Mark. If I'd known you could do that, you could, you could have been on the, the album. Take me back to my vocal poll up days and I would have ragamuffin the shit out of that. <laughs> dilly, dilly. Uh, great show, guys. If Banter's Fab, Shalene's laughing. Uh, what if... Oh, no. Piss myself laughing. Colin always loved you the best, says Sophie. I love you the best as well, Sophie. Uh, we've got I love you the best, cere- Colin, and you the best, Sophie. Sophie, well, Sophie. Bill, Bill says your ceremony isn't eating too much. Right, you might have noticed, Bill, that every single flyer that I've shown you today is absolutely shite because <laughs> I'm making these flyers and I have run out of energy and time to conduct. I've been making these flyers while I'm doing the show. I've kind of, I'm done. 
So sorry if there's any spell mistakes. No, I won't be making any changes to them. It's shite flyers for the rest of the year. And then I'll come back in January refreshed with, with new flyers. How about that? Apart from Becky's flyer, actually, because she made that one. What one's that? Uh, that? This one. That one is well That's done. Well, exceptional. And she actually made that a gif as well. I've just uploaded the wrong one, but there's a gif. We'll maybe get a glimpse of that later on. This one's all right. That one worked all right, but that's just by fluke. I think that looks quite good. Max Thompson, although you can't see Max. I'll need to remember that for future, that it just looks like Max Toms. <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> I, was, I was trying to look not up make, that not Max, Max me, Toms. Tom. What? I was about to look up Max Toms on <laughs> Spotify there and fucking wondering why I wasn't like getting a, any results. Like a, 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 a packet of, you know, a, a, a 10 pence packet of crisps that just became a 30 pence packet of crisps, like maximum Tom Toms or something. But yeah, no, it's him. Um, that's actually Max Thompson, who's an incredible <laughs> hip hop artist. He has um, went from Motherwell to Toronto and he's absolutely smashing it. So I'm excited sure, by it. I, I believe, oh, oh, that's the Royal Rumble. That's the countdown. That's the countdown. <laughs> It's Her Majesty. It's me. Hi, Jay. Hey, Jay. I don't know how this keeps happening. Listen, I was just trying to eat some pasta, and now I'm on the bloody telly. <laughs> Are you okay? Last, <laughs> last time I spoke to you, you got a shower for David Tennant, so... That is I true. You, I thought you were wearing that Davy Crockett hat there, but it's just a tiger skin Santa hat. I, I actually, this wasn't for this. Let, look at my jumper as well, by the way. This is That's for an icebox it. thing. They forced me, well, they didn't force me today, but I, I was already dressed up, so I thought, oh, yeah. But I was actually, look, I'm literally just eating my dinner in my bed with the cat, and uh, now this is happening, so. What are you having for your dinner? It, it's literally just a, a microwave meal for Aldi because I'm poor and lonely. Oh. <laughs> no, but it's um, it's pasta, so that's the love of my life. <laughs> <laughs> a good pasta, though, a, a Christmas pasta. Does that exist? It's um, it's oh, chicken and bacon. Pasta. So cinnamon, a bit of cinnamon in it. No, just... I'm, Jay, I'm on... Jay, are you are you like your tiny Tim uh, the the show tonight? <laughs> yeah, I could die at any moment. <laughs> <laughs> and the ghosts of Christmas past. Yeah. The, ghost Christmas the, pasta. the ghosts of Christmas <laughs> pasta are uh, going to come out and make sure that, that we do it. You know, we'll, we're going to, um, we're going to, we would like to see the the, the don't dilly dally before, but we're going to have a bit of um, uh, just get yourself ready for that because Her Majesty will be joining the don't dilly dally off in a second. But I just want to before I forget, Vanilla Johnson has sent me the the blanket. So we'll talk about the blanket earlier on the Bella Drum blanket. Where uh, out of nowhere, look at this. How good is that? I'll make that full screen if I can. So look at that. That was, uh, and I believe that if you want that more stuff like this, that's beautiful. You can order it. She doesn't do a lot, but you never know. That's so nice. Like, know. You know, it's, it's, um, Apollo, it's Ninja Stitch Party. I'll bring that up yep. on the screen. It's uh, Ninja Stitch Party. So um, on Instagram. That's a great name. Ninja Stitch what, Party or Ninja Sex Party at all. <laughs> Big shout Ninja out to Ninja Sex Party, Danny and Brian. No, it's Ninja Stitch Party. It's yeah. uh, get that added now on Instagram. Just to follow it for the designs or, or commission it. You know what I mean? Oh, Not everything's design. free. She doesn't do a lot of commissions, but you can always try your luck. You can try a lot if you're lucky. You may you may get that. We've got uh, we've got uh, Lindsay Stewart says T-shirt arrived today. Many thanks. Thank you very much for your patience, Lindsay. And um, anyone who's been waiting for the Who Took Utopia T-shirts, our good friends Parallel Prints had to buy a new printer, and mm -hmm. with uh, all the backlogs, everything was delayed by quite a bit this time. But uh, Parallel Mind Prints, Mandy's uh, been such a uh, we've got we're staying loyal to Parallel Prints all the way. Mandy has just been amazing. Uh, support over the years and if you want any t-shirts done go to mandy parallel prints it was just you had to get a new printer and it's not the easiest time to get a new printer Lindsay, if, you need, if you need a quicker t-shirt pm me yeah <laughs> or yeah well I mean, you, can go, you can go to john 
Do you know what? I'm actually going to I've got an I've got an idea. I'm going to get I've got someone else to to send the merch out in general because I just got to the point now that merch just gives me an absolute anxiety you now that the whole idea of it because when things are running late, even I feel like I'm letting everyone down when I, I get a message that someone's let down, and I just I can't handle it anymore. So I'm either not going to sell any merch or, or someone else is going to do it from now on in. Uh, there's but, lots yeah. of th- third party companies you can use for, for drop, that sort of thing. Red but... Bubble. I know Mickey Nines uses uh, Red Bubble for drop shipping. And maybe that's a way forward, but I think that they take a bit too much of a, a cut, to be honest. So I'm not, maybe there's someone else that's... It's I'm always hoping. the way, but for the hassle, it ends up becoming a second job at times. Do you know what it I mean? Does, that is a man. total pain in the arse. It does, and it's like, it was, was it something that I actually quite like doing? At one point, I actually was going to try and start my own kind of merch company and just get like lots of bands involved and do it for them. But I don't think it's for me, man. Not Not anymore. I suppose if it was my main job, I'd be good at it because it's quite fun in a way. But when you're doing a million other things, you're just like, oh god, man, it just fills me with dread doing it now. So I can't do it anymore. I can't. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> New Year's revolution. Name air. Name air. And um, thanks for your patience. And um, there is uh, fetch and pitch for CDs available. If anyone, if I've sold, <laughs> anyone. I'd, not this week though. It won't get sent out this week. We're talking January. I think. I think I'm. I'm done with the post office for the year. And I think uh, I think everyone is. I'd uh, even get whoever in time. I think the post uh, office is having its own COVID issues as well. I think. Aye. That... There. Uh, I think there was about 50, 50 staff members in yeah. Glasgow and the one. And I think a few place. of them are probably taking a just taking a sickie because now's a good time <laughs> to just get away from the <laughs> the busiest time of the year. Uh, but but shout out to all the posts. I'm only joking at that. The hardest working, the most underappreciated people, uh, key workers out there, I think. Because I think that, I mean, I know that um, obviously the, the 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 nurses and doctors have got the hardest job out there. But I know that, you know, to a point, people do respect what they do. Well, not as much as they should be um, at times. But I think they just people, you know, people, I just see people complaining about fucking posties all the time or deliveries being late. And uh, wait from, you know, like on Rhymesay Entertainment, there's a page going on about it as well. And it's just like... Everything's the way we twist it, sent out a t-shirt and it took three weeks to get there. And it's just like things are a bit fucked just now. I think we've just all got to accept that. And um, hopefully everyone understands. Uh, but thanks to everyone's to patience for supporting uh, our band without merch and without patrons, we would have been I would have been absolutely fucked by now. So so thank you so much, everyone who's doing their bit. It's really important to all the underground artists to just support them. And if, if that means even if you're skint, you don't need to buy something, just share their videos and, and tell people about them because maybe you've got a friend who does have enough money to, to support. We've got um some nice feedback coming back from the uh, from the I'll bring that ninja stitch party up again. So Ninja Stitch Party on Instagram. Uh, love the artwork, Jay. Is that? I think she's talking about the artwork behind you. That Fathom actually gave me that. Lovely stuff. That's brilliant. That is cool. Where is Fathom? <laughs> Why is Fathom not here? I, I tried phoning her earlier because I, I thought we were a bit underrepresented. So yeah. she didn't answer. She dinged me. <laughs> But, uh, we've got Shelto Mel going back to Ninja Stitch Party. She's saying beautiful. Petra says great jumper. Uh, fire yes. flyers are complicated. I prefer a list to read. Just saying. Well, that's fine with me. I'd rather just make a, a flyer of everyone that's about to perform that's going to be on the show. But the problem with that is that you still need to change it every day or score out the person that's been on because people complain about that as well. People just complain. I suppose. You, I suppose. We, we, to have a show with this, you actually need a team. But there is no team at this stage, so we just need to do what we can do. I'm afraid we've got people saying that Jay, you can do this, but people have belief in you. Do you Charlene want knows I can do it because I, I had a mild panic attack in Edinburgh, I think it was, um, at last year at the is it Dr. Bell's Baths? I forget what it's called. Yeah. And I looked yeah. at you, John, what you looked at me, and I knew it was coming. And you held the microphone out and my and my soul left my body because I was like, <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> yeah, no, that, I that's... Always say stuff. I say stuff and I'm like, oh, fuck, I, you've got anxiety, you can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, it is a, a tough one, so you just having the microphone passed to you because it, it feels like you're not really... In, you've, not, you've not got the same 
uh, you can't you're not in charge no. of the timing. You're not in charge of the timing. You can't say no, and you have got a bunch of people talking, uh, looking at you. So, Jay, Jay, hopefully this isn't as um, bad as me passing the microphone to you. But technically, I'm passing the microphone to you just now. <laughs> well, we've got, we've got, we've got music. That was cool to me to lay there. <laughs> oh, Colin's it's playing a bit as well. It's a Christmas miracle. Have we got live music here? I don't it's think Christmas is going to Could Jesus help you? No, not really, no. No, it's not helping. I don't, I don't really know, know what, what I'm doing. Have I just to do the bit and then yeah, the yeah. Like, do the <coughs> okay, we'll go, we'll go around, we'll go around, we'll go around, we'll go around, we'll go around. Just to add to the, the, the go, Colin, give it a go. Don't dilly dally all your drive to do lally, let the lollipop people be your pally wally. Vanilla Johnson. Don't dilly dally all your drive to do lally, let the lollipop people be your pally wally. Don't dilly dally. Oh, I fucked it. Don't dilly dally all your drive to do lally, do your lollipop, let it be your pally wally. Not so great. Okay, Jay, you can do this. Don't dilly dally, you drive me to lolly, let lollipop people be your pally wally. I can do it faster, but um, I'm actually we'll having a stroke right now. No, I'm currently we'll having an actual a bit faster. I'm screwed, it's well done. It was very good. Got got how, John, how is it? Don't oh, dilly dally, you drive me to lolly, let the lollipop people be your pally wally. Showing off I can't do the reggae one because Bob Marley's watching me and he will haunt my dreams if I do it in a reggae voice. Well, that is true. It is true. Like that, there is, it's um, it's definitely borderline. But I think it's um, <laughs> done with cultural respect rather than appropriation. I'm sure. We're going to play a little video just now of another Christmas song. And um, this was, um, I would say, the second best Colonel Mustard Christmas song. Uh, we'll not talk about what the third best one is. We maybe will talk about the third best one. Uh, but we will not be playing it. No, uh, that was the one. that was the one that me John did with John McCrory. <laughs> um, the Santa Claus. Uh, when Santa Claus is coming, <laughs> <to> <laughs> the worst. The worst. So I think we. I think we. we, we for some reason, because Christmas pimping went well. So uh, maybe we could just do it. Maybe we could just do it. not one of these every year. And uh, absolutely not. What a shambles that song was. We'll maybe uh, talk about that. It was it was a very niche subject. It was about if you like Christmas, we also hate Miss Santo, like the guys that are bad for the environment and with their poisonous seeds and also some niche nineties wrestling references as well. So it wasn't a mainstream success. But this is more like it. It's um a wonderful Christmas time. Oh, Martin Lindy Bank on the video as well. Let us know what you make of this. Do you prefer this to Christmas pimping? Or uh, or do you prefer Monsanto Claus is coming to town? So I'm sorry. I'm sorry to my mummy. I'm sorry to you. Sorry for saying I don't like him. I'm sorry for saying I don't like you, but I like you now. I'm your best friend. Don't be frightened. Don't be scared. Colonel Mustard's here. It was the year 2017. Unless we don't get around to recording this until 2018. In which case, it was the year 2018. The year of our Lord. Pestilence, famine, war, austerity perpetuated by the establishments all across the world. Some call them the Illuminati. But don't worry, the Christmas adverts have started in August. It's Christmas time! Santa Claus knows your back details. Red off the red, no stain, they're in a zero. 
of Jesus. My credit cards need shredding up. The bank is down, so can can its interest rates go up? Sweatshops filled with sorrow. Meanwhile, in the West, we beg, steal, and borrow. Lock up the ocean with plastics tomorrow. The answer's the food chain. Be careful what you swallow. Oh, gonna have a wonderful Christmas time. take their place in the economies of the 21st century. How do we do that? Given that we can't anticipate what the economy will look like at the end of next week. Every country on Earth, on Earth is trying to figure out how do we educate our children so they have a sense of cultural identity and so that we can pass on the cultural genes of our communities while being part of the process of globalization. How do you square that circle? You call that radio. Makes coherent sense. As you call that radio TV, we've got a new Patreon in the house. Thank you very much, Charlene. Round of, round of applause. What's the applause button for Charlene? <laughs> Welcome back to Patreon. May all your raffle dreams come true. We've got... Colonel Mustard in a Dijon 5 and Her Majesty with a Christmas message. Oh, he's oh, oh, back. Oh, it's away there. Uh, Craig Andrew. Kendry says, Come to Poland, you mad bastards. <laughs> is that, okay. is that, are you up for it? Aye, uh, big time. I was yeah. to Poland. They're not bad. The thing about Poland is that they're out of the EU as well now, so it's like, there's probably got to be some sort of, sort of, the only place that you can go is Poland and the only place, you know, Maybe they'll be the non, the non EU countries. They'll build a bridge between Poland and Britain where we can just go and visit each other, and that's it. And we're, allowed, we're, allowed, we're allowed a week in Poland, <laughs> and uh, Poland's allowed a week in Britain, and then or something like that. Yeah, but we, we, you know, shouts to Craig, he was actually really close to sorting us out with a deal as part of our European tour. We're going to be hopefully playing a festival over there and he was going to be looking after us. So thanks to Craig for, for at least trying. And he, he was quite, he was um, doing his best over the over this year to make it happen. <laughs> uh, what, what, the got locked up for spray painting and lockdown. Mark, whatever happened to this lad who got locked up for spray painting and lockdown warnings or something? I'm not, I don't know anything about that, man. I'm sorry, I don't know. Was I talking about that? I don't know what that's about. Um, 
I ended up in the hospital that day with Susan rather than being in the video. Strange day indeed. Talking about the Christmas video. You still made the video soapy because you were you were in the skiing scene, were you not? You were still in the skiing scene. So there. Uh, mm -hmm. Charlene says, love this tune, this is my favourite, so that's the best Christmas song best Charlene. Christmas song. Have, have you heard, one. Charlene, though? No. Can I ask, have you heard um, the <laughs> Santa Claus is coming? <laughs> I, was, I, was just, I was searching for that online, I can't find it. Huh? Where, where would it be? Did we not I, start a new was, band? Was it, a new was band? It, it was Yellow Movement. It was, it was under, yeah. I, it was either on Bandcamp or Soundcloud. Yeah, no, it was Bandcamp. Tempted to say like Bandcamp it, under it, Yellow it, Movement. It, 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 from, uh, the, uh, are you still re are you still raking it in for for Monsanto Claus is coming to town? <laughs> I've not seen I've not seen one penny of that. <laughs> no, well, I've not either. I think I think all all the money went to the the charity. It's resting it's resting in an account somewhere. Yeah, but someone should check that. Something I like the fact that Neil Young brought out like an anti Monsanto album a year later just to completely blow us out the water as well. <laughs> yeah, so we're actually stealing, stealing Neil Young's ideas. Let's try and find this. It's can I just say, can I just say, Kirsten cut, cut for the band uh, is watching this. Can we get yeah, her on? We're going to have the pressure on. Come on, Kirsten. Come on, Click this link. Click <laughs> here to join. I'll put the link in the comments. Well, yeah, well, like she's, hear, well, she's joining. I've just I don't even think your course. band, I don't think most of Colin must have even heard... I've sent the link yep. to you, Mark. Oh, have you? Right, you just want to hear it. He's still we'll charging 50 pence to buy it as a dick it'll drive. Hey, we no, do you know, you need to what buy, you? you need to buy it, you, you're not just getting it for out. <laughs> well, wait, 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 wait. you can, you can um, remember there's a, oh, all right, you've sent it in my Facebook, there's a wee private chat thing there for future though. I'm using my phone. Okay, I found it, okay, right, wait, okay. Have we got lyrics? Is there, do we put lyrics up there? Yeah, no, no okay. Not. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. I have to just just have Mark is going to play this. I just want everybody at home to know he really drove this uh, track. <laughs> I was just more of a, <laughs> a bit <laughs> part player. Daddy, Daddy, <laughs> well, that's not um, that's not true at all. <laughs> what what I remember happening is is that well we got I'll, I'll get it was supposed to be like a, a gyro babies. Do you want to be part of a Christmas? single and obviously the rest of the band said no apart from me and John McCrory and me and John McCrory <laughs> turned up expecting all the ba your band to be there Aye, and your no, band no. didn't come up either your band didn't was, know what it was seen it was just right. I think, it was, I think the, it was you and the family you the kids I think you were babysitting the kids in a studio uh, there was a guy uh, there was a producer there poor John McCrory ended up playing bass guitar drums everything he hadn't really been in that environment, I think, before. He did a great job. By the way, this is no disrespect to John McCrory. John McCrory did a great job. It's more about Aye. the dangers of going into a studio without a fully formed idea. And you, had done, idea you, you had been doing an all-nighter and you had two steaming people with you as well. <laughs> and I, I, had, I had the kids, and it's where I found out the kids had E. coli. So I got a phone call, and it was after you were away, where it was a host, the yeah. hospital public health phone me to go, uh, your kids have been in contact with a pal who's got E. coli, can you look out for these symptoms? And I was like, nah, my kids are fine. And as the woman was on the phone, Evie came out, uh, or John came out the toilet, he told me that Evie had shat all over the toilet. And it was like, And that's a nice metaphor for what we did to the song, <laughs> I think. Uh, who were they? But do you know what? I had done an all nighter. I, I do remember that that is true. I had done an all nighter. I was not in my I was not in my my finest form either. <laughs> so that is also true. So it's kind of like a, 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 a I was party Mark and family John together in a studio. John McCrory, professional as ever. David Blair was there as well. I remember that. Who was the two drunk? Who was the two drunk people I brought to the studio? Because that's really that's really unprofessional. Uh, oh, who who was that again? Fuck's sake, Mark. Uh, I can see their faces, but as people I know, that they're, they're a good laugh, good kind of party people, but I can't, eh, the, the name, no, I'm rubbish not, not with names. Young Mark, that is not good enough, young Mark. Fucking hell. 
Well, you, let's just listen to it. Maybe, maybe it's not as bad as, as, as I remember it. But basically, the idea of it, the theme is, is that it's Monsanto Claus. It was an anti Monsanto. And see, be honest, man, not heard much about them this year. So maybe we, we did more we, good. We put them to bed. We maybe, put them to bed. Maybe things would have been a lot worse had it not been for this song. It's called uh, Monsanto Claus. Can you see that? Or is that, is that well, I'm getting myself. Or is that going to be? What am I saying? The, you're twisting my melody. Cold the crops. That's a good I'm not pout, you can't opt out. Uh, when Santa Claus is coming to town. Sorry, sorry for interrupting that. For you know, you know, you some nice wrestling references for the 90s kids like out there. Jake the Snake. Come no, no, can't get no sleep. Monsanto is a chemical and biotech company founded in 1901. And their history, they have developed nuclear and chemical weapons. Some millions of tons of Agent Orange in Southeast Asia causing traffic birth defects and serious health problems. They have invented and distributed some of the most harmful chemicals the world has ever seen. DDT, PCBs, glyphosate and GM crops. Monsanto's have seen profits and monopoly, gives farmers little choice but to buy their seeds and helps them influence and buy politicians and decision makers in every corridor of power. Monsanto's biggest fear is a well-informed public. Is that Blair? I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. It was good. Is that the only time we recorded Blair? Aye, was that Blair at the end? That was Blair, aye. aye. Um, I really that, I mean, that, bit, that bit there's good bits to it but you're muted Mark Mark you're muted the bit. original version David Blair went on for I believe a, a good few minutes longer than that is that right <laughs> at the end no, no. no. I don't believe you it was, <laughs> to be fair mate I I I I think we went on a, a bit too long. As well. yeah, I mean, uh, there's, <laughs> that, there's certainly. A, I'm not going to. I'm not. I'm I love the, the, the un, unexpected item in the baggage area. I'm not supposed to blame to anyone. I'm taking responsibility. Absolutely ridiculous things. Deal Winton in supermarket sweep. I can't. Get, Dale can't get. <laughs> I can't get no sleep. So as if, well, what's that's that brilliant. Deal Winton was faithless. 
So I would like, I would like, to, I'd like to, I would like to be in the brain of a. Is there any any young people or older people who would just wouldn't get any of those references like Faithless, Dale Winton, <laughs> Jake the Snake, Legion of Doom, and yeah, not not know the know the greatest moment. Also, would I, I think though it was quite nice. It was it was a good moment where we both probably as frontmen of bands realised how much we actually need our bands when they don't turn up. Although yeah, John, well, John, John had done an amazing, I like the actual music in it. Well, the music's great. It, the music's and it's, great. A, it's, it's, it's fun. I think, it's, great, you know, I think, I think what's, what's wrong there is, is that it was just, that it was, we're on the wrong level there. I was in party mode. You're like, your kids have got E. coli mode. And uh, <laughs> together, you've got a very disjointed sound as a result of that, you know. I think we were both in party mode. Uh, or we both had kids with E. coli, I think we would have maybe been on the same level and we could have maybe made something just a little bit more coherent, is the word I would say for that. It's a bit over the place. Uh, but Martin Lindybank's like liking it. It's Christmas number one. I'd, like uh, I'd like to hear Monsanto's reply to you. Well, the silence well, said it all. I like, I, I like the end where David says that the, the last thing Monsanto want are a well-informed public. <laughs> and not, literally nobody's heard. That song. It's like, <laughs> we absolutely like the one thing we wanted to do was bring a bit, shed and, a and bit of light on a big issue. I think the people that have heard it because, as as you've heard, we've had to explain who Monsanto are at the beginning and the end of the song. Explain what's going on. So we weren't very good at informing the people. I think we've got a special guest joining us. Who can it be? Oh. Hi, Emma. How's it going? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, Mark. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How's things? I'm fine. Stop. Stop tomorrow. Stop school yeah. tomorrow. So into the bitter end. <laughs> yeah. Well, well done. We salute all the key workers really out there. Well done. Amazing. Uh, a round of applause. A round of applause. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, it's it's a, it's a it's a strange old year, a strange old year. Definitely, definitely. Uh -huh. Aye, Hat, hats off to the teachers, Kirsten. You have, do you know, any teacher oh. you speak to, it's been a difficult a difficult time. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, I think the NHS and social care gets a lot of plaudits, but the teachers have kind of kept the ship afloat. So good on you. And is I it, didn't hear that. Are you getting a? Are you getting an? Is it is it going back? As is it right in Scotland's the schools aren't going back for a little while after January. It's just a bit of an extended Christmas no, break. Uh, no, so what's happening is that we are going back. We're going back on the sixth. So sixth, seventh, and eighth um, is childcare provision. So we'll go back on the sixth, uh, seventh, and eighth for childcare uh, purposes. Yeah. So we're not actually teaching those days, but we are in school for childcare for key workers and. Um, vulnerable children and then from the 11th to the 18th it goes to online learning but we will still have key worker children and vulnerable children in our classes at the same time so yeah it's going to be interesting I've never done both at the same time but you know <laughs> so what you enjoy your break yeah, anyway sorry. enough of that enough of that enough of that you've done that Hello. We, we wish you're on holiday now, so well, uh, I'll yeah. tomorrow. I've taken my hat right, off okay. actually. Hats off, hats off hats for the off. teachers. Hats off for the teachers. I've actually, <laughs> it's, it's nice to hear that because I've actually come off Facebook because I felt there was a lot of teacher bashing going on. Um, oh, no, it's, yeah, I've no, seen no, that. I was like, that, I was like, do you know what? It is hurtful after a, yeah. <laughs> after a while, you know. You just uh, got the wrong end of it. It's, you're, you're in, people just rely on you to take care of their kids. You're the key workers with no protection, no government provided yeah. PPE whatsoever. Just get on and do it. Um, what are you complaining about? It's just not fair. Like I, th I think the, the general rule is just, I think it, the general is just stay off uh, Facebook's probably a good idea. I mean, that's why we yeah. just moved the show to YouTube. Just, it's, uh, yeah. it's just... 
it's the way that Facebook's designed right now is just not helpful for these si helpful. serious situations where the way that people are interacting with conversations and you know, I've I've managed to stay away from arguments for I think the first few months I was debating with people or trying to, you know, share information to try and sort of like put a, a different side across, but at the end of the day, people are just trapped in their own little algorithm bubbles. They're going to believe what they want to believe, and exactly. it's just really bad for you. Because once you once you say one thing, you need to stay to the, the death of that thread, or yep, else you've yep, lost uh -huh. the argument. So you're just wasting too much time waiting on people um, notifications going. It's a terrible way to spend your life. It's a it's a shit year enough as it is without arguing with people. I managed to stay away with arguments until two months ago. I think about a month ago, I did jump in one thread because I thought, no, you can't say that. That's you know, one of my friends said, follow the signs, but he was saying the opposite of what science is saying. And I just said, no, you, wait, that, that's not science. You can't be saying that's the science because the science is this. And then it caused a big, massive fight. It was, a, um, and you know, no, still not spoke to him since because it just, just, I'm just like, I'm removing myself from that conversation. And fuck that, man. Do you know what I mean? I'm not going to argue with people on Facebook. No. This is, it's just a waste of time. There's, there's a lot. I'm busy here. There's a lot of other things that can be done than argue people on the internet. And, um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, the, the thing is, the, the majority of people, the silent majority of people do support the teachers. It's just people with controversial opinions just want to get in there, and, and then Facebook will then show people the controversial opinion because they know that people will react to it. What a shit show of a, a setup, a format of Facebook is these days. So, yeah, but well, anyway, yeah. on with Christmas. Enough about Facebook. Enough about, Facebook. about Facebook. No, just, Let's talk about Christmas. Is it, is it double so, turkey? Is it, is it double turkey time? Or is it cancel no, Christmas, person? I'm going to have no, a steak. I'm having, I'm having steak as well. Oh, me too. Oh, I'm having steak. Yay. Oh, I, I'm all up. Colin, I'm all up. I'm Colin's up. a Christmas crasher, Kirsten. He, he's having steak because he'll be crashing. Are you Kirsten? Christmas. Christmas. Oh, no, no, no. He's a Christmas <laughs> crasher. No, I'm not. I, don't, I never have turkey. I always rotate it. I have a curry one year. I have uh, a Chinese one year. Uh, I think last year I had chicken balmoro. Oh, no. T I don't get the whole turkey thing. Yeah, it's turkey. not the best meal to have on a special day. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't get it. I don't need turkey all year round. I'm all right. No, it's a flash of skin. It's a flash of skin. Hello. It's a great dinner. Turkey's not the same since Bernard Matthews died. Well, he was a, he was a, he was a, he was a, a celebrated uh, serial killer, wasn't he? Really? Uh, the. The, what, Bernard the, Matthews? The, Bernard Matthews, yeah. I mean, well, he didn't get to the top by being nice, did he? He wasn't yeah, he used at the to top be, be snapped, cool, pop and crispy. Be, he but he wasn't a nice man. I don't think. I don't think. I wouldn't mean, assume he would be nice, you know, getting the top of the turkey game. But we're, we're, uh, we're, we're just uh, for clarity, if Colin does turn up to your house, the Scottish government regulations are that if you see Colin at your door trying to get crash your Christmas dinner, just, you know, be pleasant and just leave a yes. carrot out through the letterbox. And then <laughs> get bored and he'll the letter, house, he'll fly off and his reindeers and find another house off. to crash. Can we, we could have a business team. We're on a band. Let's have a business team. Business team. It's yeah. work related. It's only leave our individual counties to meet up. Well, I think that's why yeah. they moved it to Team 4, though, wasn't it? Because there was so many... It was that grey area of, of Tier 3 was the, you know, that the, you, could, you could have a business meeting, you could technically, you know, do all these things. So I think tier four just basically says you can't do anything. No. So there's no grey area now in it. So it's a, it's a bit of a shame because obviously we all had plans. There's all things we wanted to do and now it's, everything's ruined. Christmas is cancelled. But that doesn't mean that we can't still have fun. And what would you say, John, is the number one thing tip for people who are wanting to and have a good Christmas this year? Uh, if you go into band camp and buy Yellow Movement when, when Santa Claus is coming to town <laughs> and just play it, just play it on repeat. You know, maybe we could, maybe we could, uh, maybe we could type up. Way. Someone could maybe type up the lyrics so that you can read it as a, as a work of art on its own right. Because um, you know, I think that written down <laughs> without the delivery is even more fun. It'd be to, good to, to get. It'd be good to get, we've seen one of those shows that they, they listen to songs for the first time where a couple of young kids are listening to songs from the 60s, you know, Jimi Hendrix and stuff, get them to listen to it. Um, what, what do you call it, that, these kind of videos that are going on now? Uh, react to the reaction videos. Reaction videos. Needs a couple of young a, reaction videos to it. 
I've started doing a reaction show on Twitch every Friday, and surprisingly, it seems to go quite well. Do you know, the interesting thing is, is that about 14, 13 years ago, I quit computer games. I had a very serious uh, football manager addiction. I used to play Pro Evolution Soccer. I used to play LMA Manager. And I would have quite happily just stayed there in the house, smoking joints, eating food, and playing my computer games and wasting my life. But now what's actually happened is if I'd actually stayed doing that, stayed on the dole doing that, I'd be a millionaire streamer by now. But now <laughs> nobody wants to watch my show in Twitch. This show that I put all this effort into every single day, no one cares about this in Twitch. They want to see me play computer games. So it's like I'm going to have to uh, dust off the old suit because I used to wear a suit for my cup final games. You know what I mean? Even though it was a computer game, I still think you've got to look good and dress to impress if you want to take the game seriously. So... It looks like in order to actually survive in this current climate, I'm going to have to get back into my computer game addiction in order to pay bills. <laughs> <laughs> this is the world we live in now. It's topsy-turvy. Like well, if, you know, if, 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 if you've been watching Amelia Baylor's uh, Twitch show as well, she... She smashed it. Show. Yeah. She's brilliant. Like, I, I watched it. It was like a Monday morning and I'm like, <laughs> how, how's this going to work? And it's like hard just singing about different... Pizzas and sweeties and how the Papa Snack. John wigs, how the pa- snacks, aye, wigs she's and like, snacks. She's, but it's brilliant. She's doing, she's doing great. She's doing um, about four. I think she does three shows in the morning, three nine o'clock in the morning shows. And she does, I think, a big Saturday night show as well. And uh, yeah, no, uh, fair play to Amelia. And I think it works really well because it's something really unusual for the Twitch community because it is mostly about computer games. But people are loving it because she's doing live music. She's writing a song with the audience in real time. I think she's had over 300 Twitch followers, which is incredible. I mean, if you put it in comparison, you call that radio's on about 220-odd Twitch followers. And we started a few months ahead of her, and we've been doing a show almost every day over there. Not anymore, though. I'm just doing the weekly show there, um, but just now. But what I do is, just now, is I want to play a- another tune that um, I've just... It's an exclusive. We can use exclusive banner from... It's uh, Ted Danson live from Captureworks. And uh, it's a great tune. Just the cool about this one is, is it me and Tam the van? We went, we were taking the, the back line <laughs> back from the gig. I was a little bit rough after the night before, uh, to put it mildly. And on the way back, when we were taking the, the, the stuff back to Capture Works, Ted Danson came on Sonny Govan, which I thought was quite cool. I did try and video a little bit of it. It's a great tune. It's also been stuck in my head ever since that day. And uh, could you tell us, Kirsten, do you want to introduce us, tell us a little bit about the song uh, before we play it then? What, what does Ted Danson mean to you? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> what does it mean to me? It means panic, because I've got to remember I'm the first one to start and I don't usually start the tune, so that's what it means to me, it means panic. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't need to panic this time because with the miracle of modern technology, what we have is a what they, we call in the trade a pre-recorded video so even though yeah, it looks like I'll be using it so for anyone out there is thinking that how can Kirsten be there you know and how can all this band be there but yet they're on the other screen it looks like they've had a costume change it looks like they've transported into a different venue that's what this is we call as a pre-recorded video in the trade in the podcast trade and it means that this was recorded beforehand in August so that's just to explain that if anyone was confused and um, shout outs to <laughs> Captureworks for, uh, for this and I think Colin did you do a little bit extra work to this as well is this not the actual good. Ted dancing video this it is the perfect. Ted dancing video is it this is the single yeah. no, no, it's yeah. nice. yeah. so this is Ted so Carson, what, what we're here is you've got panic here it's your big stream moment it, stream it if you need to but see if you buy it you'll maybe get the Dijon 5 under the charts oh yeah yeah warming up I'm not ready aye aye because they might add play for a while. Pirates, pirates, because they are. Kirsten. Nice pirate joke from, from John. Thank you. There we go. Let's take it away, Kirsten. It's not saying drop, but... Socially, precociously, copiously, knowingly, emotionally, copiously, wholesomely, 
uncontrollably, uncontrollably, unregrettably, undeniably, most definitely, global poetry, global poetry, uncontrollably. People we charge into battle, endorphin ritual, seduction, religion, diplomacy. Dance like you don't care And if you bounce, bounce, bounce to the beat, beat, beat You can dance anywhere, you can dance everywhere Dance like nobody's watching Dance like you don't care And if you bounce, bounce, bounce to the beat, beat, beat You can dance anywhere, you can dance everywhere Dancing in the kitchen with the pots and pans and spoons Dancing in the forest with some magic mushrooms Dancing in the car park setting up the car alarms Dancing with the leprechaun and his lucky charms Dancing in unison with all of your friends Dancing with a little doll in the hills and glens Dancing with a farmer in a stack of hay Dancing at your work when you're having a bad day Dancing, dancing, I said dancing. 
Yo, this is Charlie Tuna from Jurassic 5 Live and Direct here in Glasgow, Scotland, and you call that radio? We are here to tell the people that we hear you. One God will not allow us as people of conscience to lose our morale. We see the crimes of this government, how they support every dictator and criminal on this earth. It's a Christmas miracle. It's Colonel Mustard in the Dijon 5 live. And you know what we're going to do? Just for the last little bit here, we've got an announcement to make. So we're going to go live. Welcome back, Facebook people that we, we told, that we threw off earlier on. We're going to bring you back. So you call that radio? Who else? Yellow Movement, we'll bring these guys in, Mark's podcast guys as well, I don't think I can, we'll go, oh yeah, Twitter, we'll go for Twitch as well, and who else will we bring in, I think, I think that's a bit, I don't think I can cross post from Colin Mustard's page, so let's just do that, so we're just about to, we're just about to increase our viewers a lot in a little minute, uh, we are live with Colonel Mustard and the Dijon Five here and Her Majesty also. It's the Christmas vibes. We have just witnessed Ted dancing live, uh, which has probably been, some would argue, the, the, the best song of 2020. True or false, Ron? Is that <clears throat> the best way? True. True. Best song. It's definitely stuck in my head ever since that day I had to collect the back line with Hangover, and yeah, <laughs> uh, it's been stuck in my head ever since <clears throat> as Sonny Govan played it. We've got uh, comments coming from, uh, Tam the Van says, key workers down the forge also does nameplates. Shout outs to the key workers down the forge as well. Uh, Char Charlene says, roast beef dinner for us this year. Uh, Alan says, my second Christmas as a vegetarian and looking forward to it. Good stuff, Alan. It Sharon says, my son wants me to have an ending on Christmas Eve. Also a good shout. We're not sure if we're going to go the, the home cooking route or or order something in. Fuck Bernard Matthews, correct? Um, I, think, says, <laughs> I was going to say, I think this Christmas should be about chilling because like, Christmas Day can always be a bit stressful. You don't get to relax to a certain time, but I think that's the one thing folks should do this year, just chill out a bit more. Wear your jammies all day. Have a curry instead of turkey, whatever. Well, there's a lot, a lot of sadness, but you know the fact that I'm not being able to see to see my family and stuff this year. But also, there is the the, the way you said it is a stressful time because you've got you know for the last you know whatever years I've got to you've got to go all these different places and all these things that you need to do. So I think yeah, you've got to look at the positive side that maybe this is just a time to to relax a little bit. Um, I mean, we, we may end up. I mean, I may end up working because I told people I was going to take Christmas Day off the other day, and there was a few people. It was Sharon was in the comments as well, giving me a hard time for it. Uh, so I think I'll be taking the day off. But I think Frank Foodie might be doing a, a Christmas message to compete with the Queen, of course. Uh, <laughs> and it's not. It's not ruined. Of course, it's not ruined. It's just different. Uh, Tam says, "Did you see you want an Xbox for Christmas?" <laughs> Honestly, don't get me that. Like, I, I do have a severe, uh, all jokes aside, <laughs> computer game addiction. Been 13 years clean, not even looked at a computer game since. Oh, I've looked at it. The graphics look amazing. That's why I need to stay away. Uh, we, the, we've got Jigsaw Tiger is dancing. 
Uh, Petra has noticed my costume change. Thank you, Petra. No one else noticed. <laughs> cool. well, there's actually three Santa hats here. I've been I've been changing every so often uh, during the show. Um, can, uh, can I compliment John on his Benny Lynch top? You certainly can. Ah, uh, cool. Cheers for noticing. Let's see that. Legend. Born in the Born in the Gobbles, Benny Lynch. And uh, uh, Joe Bones got a brilliant song that he made for Benny Lynch. Uh, it's as part of the statue campaign as well. And uh, we've got someone else. Uh, Sharon says, I am a key worker. Um, is there a lawyer available to help prepare my response? Uh, that's Charlene, who works for Misanto, apparently. Um, <laughs> she, did, she did enjoy the music, to be fair. Which means what she's saying is that she, she thought our lyrics were shite, John, which is fair. I mean, it, it, does, it does suggest that there was no effort put into that song at all. And I, I think it's fair to there say was that. There was a lot, I remember having heated debates with you on the day about, you know, no, that that's lyric, no, I, I think that's bit will be good. <laughs> yeah, well, it didn't work, did it? It didn't work. <laughs> those heated debates sometimes bring out the best in a song. But do you know what? Who's to, who's to say that without those heated debates, the song couldn't have been a lot, lot worse? We don't know these things, do we? <laughs> uh, we've got, uh, Mary Grant says, Merry Christmas, guys. Some of us are working through Christmas. Stay safe. Everyone, eh, the Christmas Day key workers, absolute legends. And um, Disco Dave wants to know when are we getting shipment on ice back? Good vibes. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's, a, that's a no bad shout for a, a Christmas tune because it's got ice. Ooh. We were going to do, a, we were do a, <laughs> well, everything a, else, apart from everything else. <laughs> the, the I know. You're the you are, you are going to get cancelled one Christmas. I know that. Maybe you should have a, a song well, ready you know, for being cancelled at Christmas. Uh, <laughs> Colin Sims ran away before I got to pull him up. We we started working on a Christmas song back in October. We're saying that you know, if ever there was a time to make a Christmas song, it's this year. Yeah, awesome. Hello, hello, we've got a new Hi, Hello, Hi, Colette. hello, Colette. <laughs> hello, Colette. She says she's got new followers, so thank you. New followers. Uh, sure. Good stuff, and if you want, you still if, there's, if anyone's on Instagram, go and go and give Ninja Stitch Party a follow go. right now. Should we be cut, Kirsten, what about your rum trumpet <laughs> page? Yeah, yeah. Kirsten yeah. does ama amazing jewelry, rum trumpet. So we need to get yeah, that should... comment. Two best things in the world: right. rum What's and that? trumpet. Wait, is this rum trumpet on Instagram? Yeah, give me a yeah, follow. She, she made an amazing. Uh, <laughs> that's amazing rum trumpet on instagram mm. i'll i'll just yes. follow that just now as well brilliant stuff and then is there still time for people to get a rum trumpet jewelry oh uh, the post this year's i mean i only just got my hat check the hat that is some bobble uh, the <laughs> post this week three weeks three weeks to arrive. So the post, I think for things getting posted out. But you, but you could deliver it. You could deliver well, it. Well, I could, I could. <laughs> but you won't. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's holiday time. It's holiday time. I've got the. It is holiday time. It is holiday just, time. Yeah. It's a bit risky. But I'll tell you who is doing environmentally friendly deliveries. If anyone's in, I think you need to be in the Edinburgh area. But I'm just going to bring, I'll bring the link up for Yoko Pono. So I did an interview. I did a. I got interviewed. I think probably for the first time this year, someone actually interviewed me, and that was uh, Callum, who's doing a great podcast for Yoko Pono that's appeared this year. So it's not all bad, you know. You've got a new great new podcast, Yoko Pono. And he's going to he's going to cycle. Look at look at this. I'll, I'll bring the picture up, and um, you can see. But he's got. I think it's really cool what he's doing, because I, I think this is really a good time for anyone who has got a bike to do some some merch deliveries, because the post really is. It's oh. been. It's it's been really tough for the last uh, weeks, months, even. Yeah. And now, absolutely. obviously, with the news that, that, that there's a an outbreak in um, Royal Mail then it's probably going to be even more so. Hopefully everyone gets their presents, but this is Callum. Yeah, what about this? What? Oh. <laughs> what? 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 
What? What? What? Oh, is it me? This is Callum. This is Callum. Hi, Callum. He, he is going to be the the captain of your ship. If you need a, a you need a, you need merch. If you're in the Edinburgh area, I mean, I'm sure he would cycle to Glasgow if the money was right. But <laughs> this is where you want to go. You want to go to skyrecords.com forward slash Yoko Pono. And Callum, absolute legend of bomb scare fame yep. and also Yoko Pono fame. He is doing deliveries in Edinburgh. So go to skyrecords.com forward slash Yoko Pono. And I think that people, there is going to be people that are maybe, you know, People like myself, normally, uh, I'm one of these people who leaves it to the end and does a, a last-minute dash on Christmas I her, Eve. I tip it back at sweep. <laughs> Just punching back. You can't wind. get no sleep. That's where you deal with She's actually quite a brave uh, line. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, I'm just really going, just, just see me punching the pavement going, Christmas! But I can't do that this year, so luckily... Give me anything! <laughs> I think I'm. I think I'm in the safety zone. I'm just still waiting on a, a one or two things getting delivered, but I think I'm all right. Uh, the um, hi guys says Andrew Pennycook. Shouts to Andrew. Hi Pennycook. Andrew. Hi Andy. We've got immunity in the community. Says Tam Gay Yulchai. Says Petra. I hope you all have a great Christmas, folks. Uh, uh, COVID and no COVID seasons. Greetings to you all. Thank you very much. Hi Colette. Says uh, Simi. Uh, vanilla. Haha. <laughs> vanilla. Says Petra. Uh, Charlene's having a good wee laugh. Uh, and Raymond Dito is spending Christmas with just me and Mr. Fito, the cat, chilling steak for me and chicken for the cat. Good choices. And excellent choices. And, you know, we're we're getting to the point where we're nearly ready for the, the Colonel Mustard. We're going to switch to Colonel Mustard live at the Barrowlands. Now, oh. this is a video that's not been released before. It's a world premiere. <laughs> I don't even think the band's seen it yet, but it's going to be this going live <laughs> at 10 o'clock. I'm a wee bit worried as well because John <laughs> told me that I'm in it and it's me oh, talking yeah. before I go on stage and stuff like that, which is always a bit concerning. But I just hope that Martin likes me enough to not, not ruin me. What he's about to do. But... It's, it's brilliant. It's like, a, it's like a Christmas night out, honestly, when you watch it. Uh, uh, like like every gig, we always forget to ask the sound guys to record it. So it's not the perfect, you know, gig sound, but the actual vibe in the night. It's it, it's a Christmas night out, and hopefully for people missing live gigs, which I think we all are, it'll it'll give you a wee bit of festive cheer. And I understand that maybe just maybe Her Majesty is arranging a Zoom meeting <laughs> so that people can dance about while they're watching this tonight. Is that correct? Oh no, I meant on Christmas Day. Hey, you've misunderstood. <laughs> oh, I mean, I can right. make another one. All right, so Christmas Day, there's going to be a a, a Zoom call. Can you tell us more Aye, about that? So I just I just thought it's a wee shame that a lot of folk can't obviously go home. A lot of folk were planning to go home or wherever else, and now we're barred. Nicholas out with a sniper rifle, ready to shoot folk down. And uh, I thought, well, now that we've all got the internet and Zoom and whatever. Might as well stay on brand, and I'm going to... Um, I've posted the link in the wee chat, by the way. Um, on Christmas Day, later on, so after we've all had our dinner and we're in a bit of a coma, if MDs don't get any family to see, or if you're lonely, don't sit... Oh, I'm nearly greeting here. Don't sit by yourself. I'll be your pal. Come and join Aww. the Zoom, because nobody should be alone. I'm actually greeting. That's what the fuck? That, Calm down. No, that's, that's <laughs> lovely. No, that's really nice, nice to Really nice. Aye, but... Yeah. Good on you, like for even thinking about that and for seeing it through. So good, that's brilliant. And the link is there. It's a Christmas Zoom call. Do we have a, a time yeah. for that yet? So I panicked and I put seven o'clock because I'm actually going to my brother's for dinner, but and then I need to walk him for a draw into Sulcutts. So that might take <laughs> me a while because <laughs> um, he lives at the top end and I live at the bottom end of Sulcutts. Um, so I put seven o'clock. It might be earlier. It might be later. I might get killed in the plantation halfway between Adrosan and Sulkowitz. Who knows? But why, why is it that Sulkowitz and Stevenson have this obsession with the top end and the bottom end that you don't really see anywhere apart from like maybe Kosaith, I think, as well? I don't but know. It's like the top so, end and the bottom end and, and stuff like that. Mentality. It's a three time mentality. Well, <laughs> well, you know, Kowin and Northern don't have top ends and bottom ends. So, uh, we've just got. Yeah, but has got like the Blacklands and that. So, you don't uh, want to go. No, you don't mess with Kowin. <laughs> 
It's Kawinan. Kawinan's a, a a great place. I don't. I don't. I don't want to say, I'm not messing with. The, no, we don't want to hear um, any 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 hate for Kawinan, but we I'll, just don't. I'll, need... I'll, it's because it doesn't really have a top in. It's like because we drive through Kawinan, it's just like one big street, but then you've just got all these sort of schemes to either side yeah. of it. Nothing. So it's not really. It's maybe a side. I, I, I taught one of the schools in Kawinan. I taught Blackland. All right. Yeah. Shout outs to the that one's crew. Shout outs to the the Y the YMR the YMR the CYT the PYT. Shout outs to all the gangs Indeed. still doing their thing. And uh, <laughs> um, shout are, are we are we whistle for you? <laughs> are we are we coming and whistle for any locals out there? We're with you, and um, we're going to we're going to go just now. We're about to go live. We've got enough time to just play a little snip. One more exclusive. Before we go live to the uh, the Barrowlands for the Christmas night out, but this is a wee clip from Capture What's on you call that radio. And this is a uh, disco calling, a song I'm assuming named after Disco Colin who ran away. He's not very disco tonight. No, he's working. Working. We salute your keyboard, Colin. Uh, we'll be back in a little minute. About our very own disco That this school sucks But well, now we know There was reasons for my phobia I took the pledge For a reason to the rainbow flag To pull the pool The drips and the crack We tried to kill it Suppress it Destroy it on dresses We took it to the underground We kept on dancing to the sound She can't believe the sand You know where you need it. Best believe the hype That dirty this school never dies This call coming tonight This call coming They said that this goes up. Well, that's where the lives are given the genders. Low down and knacking, the plastics are packing. Fire out in your face, we're gonna tear up the place. I had any critic from the crib to the city. Get down and boogie, keep on drugs and shake your booty. Cool down the gang, sticking it to the man. Best believe the lies, that dirty just go never dies. This call coming tonight. This call coming all of my life. This call coming tonight. This call coming all of my life. Yeah. Got lots of gold hair, personality got flipped. Need some money's everywhere. Disco calling words here. He got lots of gold hair, personality he got flipped. Need some money's everywhere. Disco calling words here. D I S C O C O L I N D I S C O C O L I N. Inflatable, infallible. Baby, he's incredible. Malleable, incredible, sometimes even edible, inflatable, fallible, malleable, credible, credible, malleable, sometimes even edible. This call calling tonight, this call calling all of my life, this call calling tonight, this call calling all of my life, this call calling tonight. Amazing stuff. 
it's Colonel Mustard and the Dijon Five. It's a Christmas miracle, and I think we've got a special guest just joining us. Can it be you? I think it is. educate our children to take their place in the economies of the 21st century. How do we do that? Given that we can't anticipate what the economy will look like at the end of next week. Every country on Earth, on Earth is trying to figure out how do we educate our children so they have a sense of cultural identity and so that we can pass on the cultural genes of our communities while being part of the process of globalization. How do we square that circle? As you call that radio TV, we are live with Colonel Mustard and the Dijon Five. I believe that we're about to witness the Barrowlands Night Out. Uh, I was hoping we get a special guest, but I don't think we're going to get him in time. It was a last minute try. Uh, but we do have uh, good times, says Mark Calvert. Have a great Christmas, everyone, says Jigsaw Tiger. And if you're a, you call that radio Thanks, guys. Don't, don't Thank worry. We are, we are, we are, we are here all. All Christmas. We're here tomorrow with Max Thompson. Ignore oh, no. the, the, That's the best. Uh, uh, We've got on Christmas Eve, we've got the awards ceremony to find out who is the best. We're going to be shining a light on the best music and the best stuff of 2020. We might even shame some of the losers of 2020 because that's what people need is kicked when they're down right now. We've got... <laughs> I'm, I'm only joking, obviously, there'll be none of that. There'll be none of that. We'll keep it at Christmassy. We've got... Uh, Boxing Day, we've got over here in the West End with all of that happening. We've got uh, Becky Wallace doing a takeover for that's what she said, an all female lineup on, on the 30th. And there's more stuff than Hugman A. There might be Hugman A. How you doing? How you doing? You all right? Yes. Like yes. Like yes. Scooby. Scooby. <laughs> I was like, yeah, he calls you Scooby. He always calls me Scooby. <laughs> Why do you call me Scooby? Because I don't know your name, I just call you Scooby. Scooby. <laughs> Do you know what we're going to we're going to bring on a special guest? He was here a second ago, but he's not here now, and I don't know where he's went. Come back, you've got a, a, a second to get back on, and then we're going to introduce. So the you call that radio? I just want to say a wee thank you, thank you to Catherine, Charlene, Dave, Claire, Ian, Rory, Kath, Louise, Mo, Tom, Andrew, Martin. I think that's most of the patrons that signed up in December. Help us build it at patreon.com forward slash you call that radio. We're trying to reach that mir Christmas miracle goal of 200 patrons. And um, I think we're just ready to go live to... I'm going to put a, a link in the comments because I don't want to show it here because if we watch it here, that will take away from the views on the Colonel Mustard page. So tune in here. I put the co I'll put it in the comments. So yeah, guys, I put it in the comments. If you're on Yellow Movement, you call that radio, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch. You need to click that link right now. Click that link and it will take you to the Barlands Ballroom. Unfortunately, we've not got the special guest that was going to introduce it. I hoped. I was hoping Martin Lindybank would do it. He did appear briefly, but I think he's busy. Uh, someone else want to introduce it? Vanilla Johnson, do you want to introduce what is about to happen? Well, this is going to be our 2018 Christmas gig at the Barlands. A bit of backstage, a bit of on stage, and a bit of everything in between. So Merry Christmas, everyone. I hope you're all safe and happy and you can talk to people you want. Thanks, Mark, and have a good one. This is the gig. John, anything to add to that? Just Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry have a good one. Merry Christmas, Kirsten. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Where's, so yeah, I, can hear you, I can't see you. Uh, Martin Windybank is here, I think. Martin? Hi, Dan. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you doing? This is, is, this your, like, is this your um <laughs> Oh it's working. Oh you're working. <laughs> um, no, how's no, it going, man? Are you a are you a cult party or something? This is how all the premiers are, are witnessed. Um, good to see you, Martin. Merry Christmas and hopefully Merry we'll Christmas. see you on Friday. I understand that you might be joining us in Box Day from the West End. I believe your premier's about to start, so I think it's best that you introduce us. What can people expect here? Well, I was just basically stoning about the barrows with a 
camera in my hand. Uh, it's not it's not the most uh, steady professional stuff, but it's a nice <laughs> wee film, and you get the vibe. It's like uh, it's like a simulator. It's like a night out simulator. It's like uh, kind of like your point of view is the action. So it's on the stage. Everything's going off, man. It's all happening in, on on those scenes. So. Bro, it's, it's, got a vibe. it's got a serious It started. Vibe. It's actually started, so we need to go just now. Thank you, Martin. I'll see you in okay, Boxing enjoy Day. It. Enjoy it. Um, do you know what I'm going to do? Just, just to, uh, in the meantime, since people are all tuned in here, I don't want to lose everyone. I'm going to play this just now uh, on this channel, but it will be going to the Kona Mustard channel. So I'm just going to spam that link a bit just now. Uh, thank you, Martin. Thank you, Kirsten. Thank you, Rajasthan. Thank you, Vanilla Johnson. Thank you, John McMustard. Uh, this is... The Colin and Mustard of the Dijon 5 Christmas party from the Glasgow Barrowland. Enjoy this just now on you call that radio, but we'll be switching to the Colin and Mustard uh, channel. So keep an eye out for the link in the comments. Nice one, guys. And I'll see you tomorrow night, 7 o'clock for Max. So Dave, um, he's, 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 he seems a wee bit nervous, he's, he's, he's excited, he's about to go on stage for the barrow and he's never played before, apart from he said 20 years ago he played in a wee bar down the stairs, so he's just really excited and he's going to kill it, because Stanley would always kill it, but he's just, that nervous energy is good for me before you go out there, so uh, yeah, go, go Stanley Hood. <laughs> Around the fridge than there are in the fridge at the moment. We should probably rectify it's getting that. Low. It's getting low. Yeah, a lot of boxes. A lot of boxes for it. I don't normally get nervous, but I'm nervous tonight. John, I'm nervous. Hold me. Come and hold me, John. Hold me, Johnny. Hold me, Johnny. 
You know, you'll be okay. You'll be okay. You're a good bass player. I'm a reasonable bass player. You're a... Average, distinctly average bass player. You're becoming better as a human being as well. Thanks. You're now an acceptable human being. Thanks, John. And an above average bass player. Thanks, John. And a 10, 10 above par keyboard player. I know. <laughs> Oh, did you get a Santa suit call? Still. That's right, my fingers, glasses and high heels. He's been a bad man. Stop filming me. We've got a pre-gig chat. Oh, pre-gig. Oh, I just can't wait to come up. It looks absolutely amazing out there. The crowds are absolutely awesome. And I've seen loads of lights and loads of hats and decorations. Yellow man, baby, love you. Get on stage. <laughs> Top job, man. But someone's got to do it. He got me a dog. Yes, he always goes here. Let's go, Barrowlands. That's the third time. I think this one's a bit more special than the others because this one's, you know, we put a lot of work, put a lot of effort in here, and to do it for the third time means that we can hopefully enjoy it when we go up there. But it's amazing we've got like, what a crowd, what a crowd out there. Like, um, I'm going to be honest, I would call it nails, but it's more excitement. But my excitement levels are extreme, to say the least. Uh, I'm just looking forward to going out, having fun, going for that. This is Colonel saying that. One minute till stage time. One minute till stage time. Colonel Mustard, how do you feel? I felt really chilled out until you started shouting at me, Vinny. This is it, man. This is it. This is what it's all about. I've been warming the crowd up, as I told you before. As I said, I would. I'm a man of my word. I'm nice and warm, nice and slippery. Never gonna ease them in.
two, knock on my shoe, three, four, knock at the door, five, six, pick up six, seven, eight, let them stay. One, two, knock on my shoe, three, four, knock at the door, five, six, pick up six, seven, eight, let them stay. Don't 
Brilliant stuff. Colonel Mustard and the Dijon 5 there. Wow. A blast from the past from a night at the Barrowlands. Thank you to everyone tuning in tonight's show. Thank you very much to Colonel Mustard and the Dijon 5. Big ups to Martin Windybank, who created that video. And uh, it's, uh, it definitely feels a lot like Christmas. I'll put my fucking... It feels like Christmas. So we'll keep the Christmas vibes going as best we can over this very strange period. Starting with tomorrow, we're going to go live to Toronto for the amazing Max Thompson. All the way from Motherwell to Toronto, he's now a hip-hop star over there. We're looking forward to hearing his story. And then we have the awards ceremony. I've made a better flyer than that. I mean, I know my flyers are a bit shite, but they're, they're only that shite, surely. I made another one. That's not acceptable. Uh, let's see. I uh, well, that one it's not great, but it's a wee bit better because other ones like a fair, like it's like a, a comic thing or something, isn't it? It's like a comic thing. Uh, well, let us know if you enjoyed that cone of mustard thing. That was amazing. Just to, to see what it the old times where it used to be, and the way one day it will be again. Don't worry about that. Yes, Christmas Eve is the end of year awards ceremony. So if you want to vote for, you know, it's a, it's just open vote for people to decide what they think that their favourite show of the year has been, their favourite song of the year. Just recognising some people that have went above and beyond this year or made some good stuff and just get the crack. It's uh, Christmas Eve, five o'clock. The end of the year, you call that radio. Christmas Day, there might be a, a message from Frank Foody as he's trying to compete with the Queen, but that may or may not happen. We don't know yet. Boxing Day is this over here in the West End. And then I think it's a day off, a couple of days off maybe. But on the 30th, we've got That's What She Said, Fuck 2020 by with Becky Wallace. The Girl Cried Wolf, Josephine Sillers, Haver, Catherine Rudy and Laura Murray. And there may be a Hogmanay thing. What about Hogmanay, you ask? What about it? We will find out and hopefully we'll get something. Uh, Charlene says it was awesome. What a great night it was. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Charlene, for becoming a patron tonight. And that was great, says Buddha. 
Was that the night Glittery Nips made an appearance? It may have been the night that Glittery Nips made an appearance. Uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, everybody. Uh, ch uh, cheers, guys. Hi. Uh, another great show tonight. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, Joyce. Lovely to see you on the show. All the best. Hi, Martin for Colette. Uh, and and shouts to Mary Phillips and Andrew Pennycook and everyone. Thank you very much. What what a, a great a great wee show there, guys. And um, we'll we'll try and keep the the shows coming over the Christmas period. I hope everyone has a, a had a nice evening. And um, we'll see you tomorrow night, seven o'clock for Max Thompson. And that is it. Bye. You call that radio, radio, radio. More like a